Hello, everybody. I think it's all working. Hopefully it's working. It looks like the audio is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I don't have the reference photo on the screen because the actual reference photo, the birds are kind of far apart and you wouldn't really see anything anyway. If you want the reference photo for this, head over to patreon.com slash lacree. You do not need to be a member to download that. You probably will have to scroll for quite a few posts because this was posted or the reference photos for this were posted weeks ago. Um, but you can get that. Oh, good. Looks like everything is working. Yay. Okay. So for this one, we're going to start these two Lady Gouldian Finches. I don't know how far we're going to get. I'm just happy the live stream is working. So I'm pretty happy about that. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this. As you can see, I had to kind of change my light. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't look that different to you guys. I had to change my layout. We redid this whole computer and trying to get everything working after last week's, um, issues and we still don't know and my husband's a tech guy he even he was like this doesn't make sense and we changed and messed with so many things i have a feeling one of the things we messed with when we did one of the many restarts doing all this something took finally but we don't know what it was because we did. yes so anyway looks like we're good angel said should i clean my oil brushes right away when using liquid if so how do i properly do it I mean, what do you mean by right away? That night, yes. And I just clean it in my Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner is what I use. And then when I'm done painting for the night, I will clean it with um, the Old Masters brush cleaner. Okay. Still limited to 720p. I, will, I don't know why that is. Hold on. That might be something in the settings. And I'm not sure why that is doing that. Maybe I shouldn't mess with it right now. I mean, it's probably not the time. Output. Yeah, it doesn't let me change from here. Maybe because I'm already streaming. We'll mess with that. I'll see if I can figure out why that is um, for next time. So I've also got to figure out how to get the wireless mic to work because that's not set up yet. So, okay. Now, birds. Actually, I'm going to move my, sorry, noise. I need to readjust my very wrinkly now um, glassine. That tape is probably not going to stick. Let's put some new tape up there. This is just to cover where my hand touches so that the oils from my hand don't get on my artwork. Your people oils, they're not archival. We don't want people oils on the thing. Come on, tape. Um, let's see, steak or fries? Fries. I'm like obsessed with potatoes, but I think it's because I did the keto diet for so long that I couldn't have potatoes, which made, I've always loved potatoes though. Anything with a potato, I mostly like, except the al gratin potatoes. Those are disgusting. I don't know why people like those. Like seriously. No, that's really gross. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm with you on that, Phyllis. We need nice weather. This is not fun. I don't, I'm still a bit concerned about some of the plants out there, but we'll see. Um, let's see. I need more coffee. I am so tired. Okay, two hours and I can nap. Irritated paintbrush said, hi, Lisa. I was wondering if you still play violin. Can you give us tips on how to balance interests and hobbies? I, I mean, okay, so violin's weird. It's kind of like riding a bike. You never forget how to ride a bike. So yes, I still play violin, but I haven't practiced it in over a year since I moved here. I haven't even touched it. So, and I need to. Um, I've been saying I was going to forever. Obviously, I'm not serious enough about it right now to actually start doing that. But um, I plan to. And it was funny. I was going to. Like, I had it all set up. I was definitely going to start practicing in the mornings when my husband went to work. That was going to be, like, the first thing I did when I got up. And then COVID hit, and... He started work, they had him start working from home and now he's, his schedule sucks because our, we're almost exact opposite on who sleeps when. It's really a mess. So it's like, I guess I could practice on my electric, which doesn't sound good because I don't have an amp in here and I'd have to buy one. It's just trying to keep it quiet. Um, and that's not set up to where headphones really, and headphones don't work well with violin anyway because you start listening through your chin instead of your ears. So the sound is off. So your pitch is off. So you're, you get in bad habits of your hand being in the wrong place. So that ends up being a bit of an issue. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I'll always play violin. It's just a matter of have I currently been practicing? 
and how to balance interests and hobbies. That I can't give you much advice on. I mean, set a schedule. Actually, I can give you advice. Set a schedule. From this hour to this hour, I'm going to do this. From here to here, I'm going to do this. From here to, like, if you have a schedule, it's going to be much easier. Oh my gosh, I have to pull out so many pencils. Much easier for you to um, figure out or, you know, to, to plan things out. If you are just like, oh, I'm going to practice sometime this week, it's probably not going to happen. Make that schedule. Uh, Nicole said, I have polychromos. 60. Do you think dormant light fast is necessary? Necessary? No. Amazing? Yes. So, I mean, nothing is necessary, but I would recommend them. They're pretty incredible. I like them. I'm scrolling. Angel said, you made me watch Kristen Stewart. I watched all her movies the whole this whole January. This is your fault. Wow, you really wanted January to suck, huh? Um, masochistic there a bit. Uh, Joanna said, speaking of weather, we're getting weather. Do the frogs feel the cold? Does it change the environment for them? Well, we keep the heater on. So as long as the heater is going, the frogs are fine. Like if it got cold, yeah, that would be a huge issue because you want them to be about 70 to 75 right around there. So we wouldn't want that to be colder for them. They can go down to like 65 and be fine, but anything more and I'd start to be concerned. Um, let's go with a nice bright orange and then we'll go with... Oh. I was looking for my, what are my polychromos red? I moved everything around and so my pencils have my drawers next to me and they're like not in the order of where I expect them to be. So it's, I'm going to spend half of today opening drawers trying to find the right brand. Yay! I'm just grabbing a bunch of stuff here. So I'm going to start with the little red head and the black. Actually, I think I've got a black right here. We'll get my purple out. Of course, we'll go with nightshade for that and purple. And we'll start blocking these in. Do I have, okay, see, this is the bad thing about cleaning. Now, nothing is where I want it to be. I have to pull it away from being put away. Um, let's see. Where were we? Uh, Sergi said, speaking of which, how and when did you get into violin? I was nine years old, so th or third grade, maybe eight years old, nine years old, right around there. And they came into my the school, and it, back then they used to actually have music in school. And everyone got to choose an instrument. Like my mom had to go rent when they did the rent-to-own thing. Um, at a local music shop and because my parents did not have the money to be buying a violin and yeah that's how I got started I learned through the school district which is not you know gonna make you amazing but I didn't practice so that was also not gonna make me amazing but that's how I started um by I forget how old I was when I started playing in the Claremont Youth Symphony Orchestra and then as an adult I played in the Claremont Symphony Orchestra for many years and and pretty much until I moved here. No, maybe I quit before I moved here. I started getting really sick with the fibromyalgia and I it, around that, like before I moved here. So I started having a hard time balancing work. And then I was showing my Italian Greyhound. So that took a lot of time. And then it was like, okay, something has to give. So I backed off on violin for a bit there. I got started again with it when I moved here. But anyway, um, have I tried the light, Derwent Light Pass paper yet? I have not. I need to ask them for that. Uh, Joanna said, bundle, <laughs> bundle up, get the Greyhound coats out. Four inches of snow in Grapevine this weekend. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have, I'm not in Grapevine anymore. I'm north, so it's worse. But yes, we have, um, Gibson has his chili dog jacket. Wade has his normal jacket. They don't go out long enough to really need them. It's like, go out, go, and get back in as fast as possible. Um, we're not going on walks, that's for sure. Um, scrolling down. Hi, Facebook users. So Facebook, ha it doesn't allow you, allow me to see who's commenting on Facebook, unfortunately, with the app that I'm using, because it like, it's combining my YouTube comments and my Facebook. There is, if you go to, hold on, I had it up the other day. It is, crap, what was it? Something, chat, chat dot restream, R-E-S-T-R-E-A-M dot I-O slash Facebook. Um, if you go there, let me see if it'll let me link that. I think when I tried to link it before, it wasn't actually showing up. But if you go here, that will allow you to um, to be able to comment and me to see who you are. Because right now, I just see Facebook user. And it seems so impersonal. Uh, let's see. So I apologize. Yes, Kathy, so far, tech issues are working. Phyllis said, do you know if Derwent ever came out with something to test uh, or protect the ink tents from fading? Not that I'm aware of. I don't even know if it's something they plan to work on. 
Uh, Jason said, did you get the computer fixed or is it still a work in progress? It's sort of a work in progress. I, I'm not, we don't know why it's working right now. I have not tried the wireless mic yet. I'm going to do that this weekend, but I wanted to at least get through this week's live stream. Like if this one is going to work right now, I'm using my Blue Yeti um, plugged into the USB. If that was going to work, we're going to run with it and I'll try to get the better one fixed this weekend. <laughs> yeah, Joanna said, I agree. Organized now everything is gone. Yep, I put stuff away and then can't find them. Um, hi, Ray. Tara said, does it make a difference if you blend with OMS as you go, or could you do the full subject and blend and then blend and then add more? It's however you want to work. Here's the thing. It has, I'm going to start with orange where I want the highlights on the bird's head. It ha You are going to have a ten tendency if you do not, let's zoom in a little bit. If you work on too large of an area, whoops, that's not what I need. Oh, not that either. Too large of an area, it gets overwhelming. So chances are your work's going to not come out as good as if you worked on one little area and then finished it and then one other area. So like with me, I don't, some artists will work one square inch and just work their way over. I will pick one area and focus on that and then work, you know, choose the next work for me. But the point is to break it down into smaller, like more manageable chunks is going to work better than if you try to do the whole base layer because that's kind of how we work with acrylics you kind of get everything you know the entire background done the entire everything and work forward you can get away with that a bit more because it's a faster medium really and then we break it down into smaller chunks but with a with colored pencil from the beginning i recommend breaking it down into those smaller chunks it's going to be much easier for you to manage your end result will be better um technically as far as like tech technical stuff goes you could do it however you want it's not going to affect the end result other than almost the mindset of this you're you're when you try to get your base layer let's say if i got this far on the whole thing it's going to look ugly for weeks and weeks of work versus i can get this whole bird to look good in one day so that's kind of it changes your mindset it's more encouraging when you see one thing look good versus everything looks ugly for so long you're probably going to give up it's a very common thing to have happen so let me go ahead and zoom you in some. There we go. Um, and, uh, let's see. Thanks, Facebook user. Angel said, anyway, Oberon Martell, who plays the Mandalorian, would be playing Joel. I don't know any of these things. I don't even want it. The the person getting fired in Mandal, you're getting into politics now. So no, not touching any of that. Um, we, we keep politics out of this. We just want to have fun and not even get into drama like that. Um, and also, I don't watch TV or The Mandalorian. So it, yeah, I'm not the person to ask. Uh, let's see. Joseph said, organized chaos has always been the way, or been my, my way. It's the way. Nick said it's the way. Oh my gosh, you guys have a, I feel like someone should be doing some kind of weird salute as you say, it's the way, like a cult type thing. Like you guys need to come up with some kind of hand symbol to say, as you say that. Uh, please review the new Derwent Chromaflow pencils. Interesting enough, I was just talking to them about that last night. So I will, that is in the plan. Um, am I still keto? No, I am not. Now I do low calorie. I still have to watch certain things like if potatoes will still mess up with my fibromyalgia and my arthritis. So I can't go overboard on those even when it is lower calorie. Um, but um, with keto, I was really struggling with like my, I didn't say keto. That's the thing. Let's be fair. I wasn't doing it right. If it wasn't working, it's because I wasn't doing, I wasn't staying in ketosis enough to lose the weight. It just, I was bad at it because I kept eating fruit. We all know that doesn't work, but I like fruit, which is funny because on the low calorie diet, I haven't even been eating fruit much. So we're not going to try to figure me out. But I I just wasn't being super successful. And that was on my own. I wasn't, and I know what was going wrong. Like it wasn't like some crazy mystery. I wasn't doing keto. I was doing low carb. And that is the difference. My husband did full keto and like lost a crap ton of weight. I did not. So over the years, as long as I stayed low carb, I wouldn't gain weight. But as soon as I would cheat, I would blow up again. And then I'd like stay there and then I'd cheat and get big. And it was just kept going on. So that's where I switched over to lose the weight initially. Um, I just went to, to low, low calorie and that has worked really well for me. That's been the most, I've been more successful with that by far than anything else I've ever tried for losing weight. So um, yeah, no, I am not currently keto or low carb at all like i live off rice right now like rice is my favorite thing in the world right now um 
Kathy said, Art, uh, Keto, you look great. I started it myself a month ago. I really love it. Awesome. Hopefully you do a better job than I did. You see, the thing with keto, you have to stay in ketosis and you cheat once and you throw yourself out of ketosis. I sucked at that with, with low calorie. It, do, it like it, it was just easier. Like my brain wrapped around it easier and was more manageable. Um, let's see. Sass said here in Calgary, it was negative 40 and with three Basenjis, it's pretty rough. Oh, feel so bad for the heat loving dogs during a polar vortex. Yeah. My little, my no fat, um, no fur pretty much dogs are not in love with this but they're so spoiled they only have to go out to to potty even right now they're holding part of it like they didn't finish their potty this morning like they still need it they're just like no we'll hold it we're good so they're um i don't want to go too graphic even though i probably already just did i mean i talk about frog poop in my fridge so that's the thing not right now but anyway um i don't know why suddenly talking about dog poop then is is unacceptable but no they're um i mean for the most part they're inside with me in the heater and perfectly comfortable they just don't want to go outside like wade actually tmi time had an accident in his crate yesterday which he hasn't done in a while that's why he has to be crated at night because he cannot be trusted um he'll just be like man i think i could go even though i went right before you went to bed so i had to wash all his bedding so i'm wondering if he was if it was more of a i know it's really cold outside i think i'll just go in the crate and not even like it, it, it'll be fine um yeah everything got washed yesterday let's see thanks joan Am I saying that right? Joan, J J H O A N. Joan, is that how I'm saying? I butcher names, so I apologize. Jason said, me too. I started violin in the third grade, had a great teacher, just not the patience with myself to continue. See, I'm kind of the opposite in that I need to have magenta. Oh, this one will work. Will you work? Yeah, red violet will work. I'm a little bit of the opposite where once I start something, I don't want to stop. Like I kind of almost have to be forced to stop. Um, like even when I quit my band, when I was in, I played in a folk band when I knew it was time, they weren't taking it seriously. And I was at a point where it's like, whatever I work on right now, I need, I want to be successful in it. I don't want to live with my in-laws for the rest of my life. And so it was either put all my time into to my own, like my own work, my own, my YouTube videos, my, like, cause it, it, the band was pretty much before YouTube for me. So I needed to put everything into it, but I, I had a hard time cause I, I knew I'd been in that band for years and I didn't want to leave it because it was fun, but they were not, they don't want to work. Um, they, they wanted, they wanted to be musicians without putting in the necessary work. They weren't taking it serious enough. And I couldn't, I was just like, yeah, no, you guys can go nowhere without me. Cause I want to go, I want to, I want to not live with my in-laws forever. So, um, that was like, I had a hard, hard time stopping that, even though, though I knew it was for the best. It wasn't until the, they got a new bass player who was just a freaking jerk. This guy was I'm having a hard time not using the swear words I normally use to describe this guy, but he comes into the band and starts making demands, but he kept showing up to practices wasted, like couldn't even play. He was so wasted. And it was like, I'm just, I'm done. And he went off on me for, um, oh my gosh, there's so many birds out there. When I, him and I got into an argument about, um, I didn't have a way to like sell tickets to an upcoming show, but I did all the marketing online and he kind of went off on that. I didn't take it seriously. And it was like, F you dude, I'm out. I'm out. If the rest of the band can't control this, this drunk, I'm not like, no. So that I, I like felt like I had to be forced out, even though for the previous like year before this, I knew I needed to leave that band. It was wasting my time, but it was fun. It sat, they were good. They were just not serious. Um, let's see. But yeah, anyway, moral of that story is I kind of, I have to have something like really shove me out. Even like once I start doing something, it's like, this is what I do forever now. Forever, I'm going to play violin, even if I never practice. Or I'm going to play in this band forever until I can't stand the new bass player. Anyway, um, let's see. Andrea said, what is the brand of black masking tape you use? I tried Jackson's. I'm in the UK and can't find it. I get it from, I think I get mine from Jerry's Artorama or Amazon. I don't know if it, hold on, actually, I have it right here. This is what it, um, the one I'm using is Pro Premium Mask. The one inch I like better than the, I got a three quarter inch or half inch recently. That was dumb. Get the, th the one inch is way better. Um, but that is the one that I'm currently using. As long as it's pH neutral and acid free and all that, then we should be, you know, you should be fine. I don't know that the brand really matters. Sarah said, this is a test, Lisa, to see if my name shows up for you on Facebook. It does. 
Daniela said, been working in pan pastel and colored pencil. Can I use touch up titanium white over the top? You can. And is there some kind of sealer on the market for when I'm done to prevent smudging? So whenever you use a pastel, pan pastel, whatever, you're never going to 100% prevent smudging. It is always going to, like that is the nature of that medium. But you can lessen it quite a bit. I use Spectrafix. I really like that one. And I put it in a fine mist sprayer like this when you guys recommended it. Um, little fine mist sprayer. So I'll mist that. And I mist it as I go. So every few layers, I'm misting it again. You don't want to wait till just the end and spray it. It's not going to be as effective. If you spray as you're going, that's going to help. Now with the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture, I would have sprayed it multiple times before I use that. Because if it's too wet, you can get kind of a pasty effect with it um, when it mixes in with the... the pan pastels um let's see where are we what are your thoughts on derwent color sock they are terrible for my techniques they don't work at all they are they don't blend they don't layer well they don't like there is nothing that i liked about them at all um they're I shouldn't say that. I think if you're doing quick sketches, they're fine, but I think that they're overpriced for what I would want for something I'm doing quick sketches with. Like they just, they would not be my choice. Um, they were supposed to be like, from what I had read, like review type things, they were supposed to be comparable or comparable to Prismacolor. Not at all. And you guys know I don't like Prismacolor. I would take Prismacolor hands down any day over Color Soft. So I'm not a Color Soft fan. Derwent luckily has fixed that. They're Derwent Pro Color. If you want a less expensive version of a good, like it works good, but only like half of them are light fast. Pro Color is amazing. Um, as far as how they work, very similar to light fast. Light fast, you're just going to pay more because they are all light fast. So Derwent does have great colored pencils. Color Soft isn't one of them. Um, there's nothing that I do with colored pencil where Color Soft is going to be a fit for me. Uh, like I said, can't layer, can't blend, can't. I mean, they were just, there were a lot of cans involved. And you're supposed to be able to. I mean, they were labeled as they, they did those things well. I didn't find that to be the case at all. They were very frustrating to work with. I didn't expect them, I didn't expect to dislike them as much as I did. So the thing that's cool with Derwent though, they knew, you know, there were a lot of complaints from artists who didn't like them. And then they're like, oh, you don't like this one? Let's make a bet. We'll make you a better product. So that's kind of the cool thing. They take that into account. Whereas you have companies like Prismacolor when people are like, hey, your product is not, like there are some quality control issues. Prismacolor is like, man, just send it back and we'll replace it they, instead of like fixing the problem. So that is, um, I definitely respect Derwent for that, but I also don't use those pencils myself. But like I said, for quick sketches, they're fine. I just think that they're a bit overpriced. For, like for me, if I'm gonna do quick sketches, I'm gonna use something super cheap. I'm not gonna use like color stuff. I think the price market, it's not obviously as expensive as like the light fast, but it's not, they're, they're not for me. Um, that's for sure. But there are like three people who like them. I mean, from what I've heard. So some people do like them. They work for some, not for others. There we go. Um, but like if you were trying to do my techniques and use color soft, you're not going to be happy. It's not going to like my techniques just don't work well with those pencils. Throw it light vest though. Freaking amazing. One of my favorite pencils by far. So I just want to be clear, like it's not like an anti-Derwent thing at all. I love Derwent. And for transparency, I mean, Derwent provides me with a lot of my, my pencils and my supplies. I can contact them when I'm out and they, you know, replace those. So Derwent and I have a great relationship, but I'm not also going to not going to lie and tell you I like a product that I don't. I don't like color stuff, which is how actually my dislike for color soft is how I got in contact with Derwent in the first place where they contacted me and were like, hey, sorry, you didn't like them. Want to try Intense instead? Because I was interested in those. So um, I love Derwent like as a, as a whole, but not that pencil. But the, that's the cool thing with, with Derwent and with a lot of these art supplies. I like that we've got options. I like that somebody else might, you know, one of the three people might like color soft. I think I'm hilarious, probably other people don't, but one of the other people who likes color soft may not like the pencils I use. So it's really, it's also a good thing that we've got options. Um, let's see, why is there a thumbs down already? Probably somebody who was expecting me to work the whole time and not chat. So. Ah, I forgot to turn put this disclaimer out there. If you are looking for just straight tutorials, head over to patreon.com or subscribestar.com. No, patreon.com slash lockery, subscribestar.com slash lockery, either or, it's the same on both plat platforms. You get access to over, I've got over 200 available immediately when you sign up. Also, Patreon has a new search feature. Like, I don't technically need a video, like I'm going to keep my video library going because 
it's just convenient, but still kind of cool. That was a new feature with them because um, that was always really frustrating. So they are, um, with those, you get access instantly to over 200 videos of just tutorials, not me rambling, me like talking through it, but not about frogs and dogs and whatever else. So um, that is going to be a better fit for those who want a straight lesson. These are artist hangouts where we get to chat and just hang out while we happen to be doing art at the same time. That is where that thumbs down came from, I guarantee you. Um, or some, or one of the three people who like color soft. Um, let's see, Phyllis said, last question, I promise. No, keep the questions coming. Do you tape your colored pencil work to the mat or make the paper the same size as the mat? I, um, my paper is always going to be larger than the mat because otherwise you'll have a gap between the edge of the mat. So it's gonna, well, no, actually, let me back that up. My paper is larger than the opening of the mat, but it's not the same, like it doesn't go to the edge of the mat. So when I put that in there, there's always like an inch or so gap around and then I, I can take that, I use a pH neutral tape to attach that to the mat from the inside. I hope that made sense. Um, Sneak said, I'm OCD about organization because space, my space is so small. Everything has to have a place. That's how, oh, when I lived with my in-laws, I definitely was, at that place, like same thing for me there because I had my bedroom there was not a huge bedroom and it was also my actual bedroom, my living room. Like that's if I sat and watched TV or a movie, that was going to be where it was. My art studio, my office and me and my Italian greyhounds were in that. We're like everybody, like it was just such a small space for all of us. So everything had to be so organized in there. Um, let's see. Angel said, I apologize, Lisa, not going to happen again. How do I keep the base of the, what, what happened? Did I miss something? Um, how do I keep the base of the brush from staining or is that impossible? The, the brushes being stained doesn't matter. As long as it's clean, the stain isn't something to worry about. So you're good. Facebook user said, replying to Facebook user, Nina Joda. Oh, I can't watch it now, but thanks for thinking of me. Oh, um, let's see scrolling to get to the next going down uh, oh we were talking about the because it got into political so that's what angel was talking about gotcha um thanks peggy hi tamara And Nick said, when you're short nose, short hair, small dog takes the first frozen whiff of negative zero air and looks at you like, seriously? <laughs> Nick has the cutest Boston Terrier and he also, but he lives in the North Pole, so he, he has to also know a lot more than mine do. Um, Erica said, I want to draw like you when I grow up. I'm 45. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, uh, let's see. Tess said, I keep potty pads on hand for my baby for these ridiculously cold days. Takes a little work to get him used to it, but he starts limping and locking up within less than a minute outside. Oh my gosh. Well, my dogs are 65 pounds, so those pads are not, there is no pad suitable for a greyhound. So these guys, that won't work on. Um, they just need to suck it up and, and hurry up and go outside. Although, like I said, I think, I'm pretty sure that's why Wade the other morning was like, man, it's warm in here. I'll just go here. I mean, he, we had to deal with him on that one anyway before. Uh, Angel said, we'd love to hear you crisply say profanity. We'd be best friends. Oh, I swear words are my main word. Like that is the majority of my vocabulary. These videos aren't challenging for me because I'm having to work and talk at the same time. It's because I'm having to work without swearing and talking and like chatting with you guys. Same. Like I'm bad. I have a foul mouth. Um, if it's like, if it comes out sounding like the more crude it is, the funnier I think it is because apparently I'm a 12 year old boy. So that's a thing. Um, I'm just scrolling. How's my little frog? So the one that was neurological problems, she's not doing good. She actually slept the last two nights. I found her on the bottom of the, although today she's up on the glass, but she's definitely not doing good. And I talked to, there's JJ to the frog girl here on YouTube. I talked to her because she's who I'm getting my next two frogs from. She um, said she did have that happen from a different medication, but still from a dewormer with some Pac-Man frogs. And they only lasted a few weeks after they, those symptoms started. So at this point, I just keep her comfortable and lots of crickets in case she does want to eat one. She mostly squishes them because she kind of flops into the bowl on top of them. But she's not doing good. The other little one is not little anymore. He is big. Like, I'm looking at him last night going, okay, are you bloated or just fat? Like, you are huge. So that one, um, 
is doing really well, but um, the, the other one is not going to be with us long. Unfortunately, um, after talking to somebody who is an expert in this, that, or I'd consider an expert, she and who has dealt with it, it's just kind of keep her comfortable. I mean, she doesn't seem to be in pain, and she can eat. Kind, of, she just has a hard time catching it. That's why, luckily, she knows to eat the bowl. But yeah, that one's sad. So, um, but the rest of the frogs, everybody else is doing amazing. Um, let's see. Justin said I'm supposed to be in my art class. I mean, you kind of are. <laughs> um, I'm just scrolling down. TK said, what exactly is Intense? Is it a watercolor or wax? It is a water soluble, it's ink. It's um, ink in like paint form. So water soluble ink is what that is. You can get it in a pencil or in a, wow, the light color keep it looks like i'm changing color here um you can get it in a pencil or a block form so the block form you would use like a pan pastel or i'm sorry well you could but as a like watercolor pan very similar in how i use it anyway and then you've got the pencil form so it's water soluble ink it's amazing i like ink tents um let's see tess said just notice the comments aren't showing up for me in real time my comment was in regards to the weather making life difficult for potty time for pets Oh, I don't know why the comment, I do not understand the, the, that side of things with the, the timing there. Andrea said, I can't layer much with Colorsoft, only use them for di designing my rug hooking. Yeah, see, that would work good for that. You are one of the three people who like, but see, that, that's what I mean though. They, all of the art supplies, I make my jokes, but realistically, it's cool that we've got so many to select for because, from because just like, I'm not a fan of Prismacolor, but there are people who wouldn't use anything but Prismacolor. Perfect. That's amazing. And it gets companies, art companies to strive for more. I don't want one company having a monopoly on anything. So when, when there's more competition that keeps the companies keep trying to strive better so they can out compete each other. It's a good thing all around. So yeah, I'm, I make my jokes, but honestly, I'm glad Colorsoft exists. I'm glad that all the brands exist so that we can then make the choice on what's best for us. Uh, let's see. Steve said, have you ever tried graphite too? I think there, have you tried graphite too? Oh, do you mean graphitins? I'm trying to use them to draw a squirrel on Polychrome's drafting, poly draw drafting film. So new medium and paper to me. Graphite, yes. Do you, if you mean graphite tint, I don't know. And I can't imagine using that on drafting film. Like that doesn't seem like it would be, I could be wrong. I've not tried it, but um, graphite tint I've used. I'm, I'm assuming you mean graphite tint and not graphite because graphite's just graphite. It's pencil. So yes, I've used that a lot, but not on, on I, you know what? I'm probably reading more into your question and I just need more information to answer. Uh, Deborah said, I had to ask if you're drawing Gouldy and Finches. I am. I used to have to. They sing so beautiful and softly. Yeah, I I considered getting some for a while and decided, you know what? I've got enough pets. I don't need to deal with more birds. I mean, my husband takes care of, we need that to dry. My husband takes care of, the, the birds are his thing. The frogs are mine. And then we both take care of the dogs. Um, fish are my thing too. But yeah, I had considered, um, the problem is my house is the real, really open concept and I don't like birds in the kitchen because some of the pans that we use and the, the fumes and all of that birds are very sensitive to. So I just don't want them near that, but it's such an open, like my kitchen is in my living room nearly. So it's like, I don't really want birds there and I could put one in my bedroom, but like I'm not really enjoying it then. then I just have it to have it, which is not what I want. So I decided not to, but it was one of my, I had seriously considered getting these guys. I used to have a canary. Well, I've had multiple canaries over the years. They don't live that, they're like, I don't know, five, six years. Um, but yeah, I, I had considered that too, but I, I didn't. Oh, good. Steve didn't need a graph, need graphy tint. I've not tried it on drafting film. I've used it on watercolor paper, hot press watercolor paper and loved that. So it's a really cool medium. The other thing, if you don't have it, I don't have it over here. The Derwent makes their extra large blocks they're called hold on actually let me grab that because this is important kind of Hmm. Where did I put them? 
had them out yesterday. And when I rearranged, I shoved them somewhere they shouldn't have been. So Derwent makes these X XL graphite things. These are, there's not that many colors, but they're the same thing as graphite tint. So if you wanted to like get a big wash on a large area, you'd use these like I would a watercolor pan, add water to it and then paint it just straight with the paintbrush onto the surface. So these are, and I don't know why they're called different things. I wish, cause I didn't know. I, I was talking to Derwent once and I was saying, you know, the graphite tints I love, I wish they had blocks, like how Derwent has Derwent intense blocks. And they said, we do. Like, what are you talking about? And they showed me these. I'm like, I have those at home already. I didn't, I never opened them. I thought they were just big because the top being black, I just thought they were big sticks of, of regular graphite. No, they're some really pretty colors and it works well for just getting a base for under your pencil work. So those are pretty cool. And I think must have if you do like the, ink or the graphite tin. Um, let's see. Joanna said, okay. Uh, Okay, it was gifted diamond art kit. Have you tried this? I have not, but that would require, I think you look down like your, anything like puzzles or anything where I'm looking down, my back won't allow. So unfortunately, those are not things that I really get into. I don't have time anyway. But yeah, no, I have not. I've seen them. They look like fun, but no. Plus, I mean, stuff like that, I don't have time for. What I do when I have free a free minute, I usually just play World of Warcraft. I like to collect my pets and my mounts. That's what I do. So that is where my, my any like free hobby time or read. Reading is the other thing. Those are like two things I do when I have free, free time. So this right now looks a lot darker than it's going to. Once this dries, that's going to lighten up a lot. Anytime you work on the gray paper, when you add the OMS, it gets wet and makes everything super dark. Um, let's see. Sass said, I got my art, my art studio all set up three days before COVID hit. Now my, my hubby uses my PC, my art desk and my art studio to work. It doesn't look like he's ever going back to work. Uh, we're having the same thing here. Matt, we'll see our issue. I actually like not working from home. The house that we chose. So we had this house built like a year ago. Well, it started getting built in 2019 and then we moved in in November of 2019. So when we moved in or when we bought it, one of the things that never made sense where I was like, this is kind of a weird design thing. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. They have this, they call it a planning center and it's kind of in between the, like the mudroom, the dining room or the, the kitchen and like the entry, like when you walk in, there's this space and it's like kind of the size here of my workspace with the, the easel and then the desk along the side. And then there's a wall on this side. So it's, you know, nice little desk, but I'm like, what am I going to do with that? My house also has, like we had one of the rooms designed as an office and then I've got the actual art. So like I have a real office. What are we, we had no idea. I thought maybe I'll store a wine there. My husband can store his whiskey there or whatever. Is it whiskey that he had? I don't know if he collects something or another. So I thought maybe it'll be like a little alcohol thing. I don't know. We never really did anything with it. And then when COVID hit, he took over that space. So it's worked out really well, but it doesn't look like he's ever going back to work either. I like him working from home, but his schedule sucks so bad. They have him working 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. It's only four days a week, but it doesn't matter. His schedule has him constantly doing that. So by the time he wakes up, it's hard to go get our errands done before stores start closing. So, cause everything closes early now. So yeah, it's been a bit of a challenge. I know poor me, my life is so hard. Like that's actually not a bad thing. He has a job, we're grateful, but it's definitely, it looks like he's staying home permanently too, but luckily he did not take over. Well, he couldn't take over any of my space because mine is like what actually, my work pays the bills. So his, his gets me health insurance. My work pays the actual bill. So he couldn't have my space. I needed it, but we were real lucky that he, we did have that weird little planting, they call it a planning center that we were like, what do you do with that? Oh, that's what you do. Zombie virus hits and husband takes it over as his office. Um, let's see. Shelly said, hi, Lisa and everyone. I'm starting a new color pencil piece on Canson Me 10s. Would the paper tolerate an airbrush background? I've not done it, but it should. You're probably going to have to do slightly lighter layers. Now, the type of airbrushing paint you use will make a difference. If you're using like Golden or Holbein, no problem. If you do what I used to do, where I would take Createx and thin it down with water, because that was too thick for the size airbrush. I, it, Createx should be like a size a 0.5 or larger needle. I was using it in a 0.3, so it would clog the airbrush. So in order to keep it from clogging, I would add water but that water would soak into the paper and so it would start to warp. So that was some, would not be ideal in this case, but if I was using my Goldens or my Holbeins, as long as I did it in lighter layers, it would, it should work fine, theoretically. Sandra said, on YouTube, you mentioned 
you love you'd love to see my first try in ink tents what was the right place to share i posted on patreon community not sure if that was what you meant oh if you posted it there i need to go look i have been so behind on everything i know there are a lot of comments over there and i even know i've gotten email or private messages i need to respond to so i'll go look over there that will work um joseph said when you when your large short haired dog sniffs that 50 degree air and likes at you like seriously better yeah that's more accurate <laughs> that's funny Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. Janice and I have two big great Pyrenees and they're in, uh, in a snow model. They call themselves polar bears of grapevine. Yeah, I bet they love it right now. Um, Angel said, right there with you. I'm so creative with the use of profanity too. I got myself a perfect spot in hell reserved already. <laughs> um, Tess said, I was gifted a set of soft pastels. Can you use them over colored pencils? My pencils are cheap, Erica sells. Um, you should, well, play with it. Experiment. Some pastels and some pencils aren't going to play nice with each other. You should be okay. Like I can put pan pastels over colored pencil area, but I'm also going to be working on sanded paper in that case. So I've got a lot more tooth. So you'll have to play with and see if it, it may not stick depending on how the pencil is on there. Um, just trying to get caught up on some of these questions. Really quick, Daniela said, purchase a set of golden open acrylic. Can't wait to dig in. Never tried oils or only acrylics. Any chance you'll try them in the future? I need to, but... I have a hard time believing I'm going to like them. I mean, which is a stupid reason not to try something. I thought I wasn't going to like watercolor, but um, I thought I wasn't going to like a lot of things I ended up loving. So I do need to try them. I just don't have like actual plans. I have some somebody gave me. I think there's like a blue and a white or something like that. So I have some here that I could test out. But for me, I don't want my acrylics to stay open. The thing that I like about them is that they dry fast. Like that's the bonus of acrylics. If I, I want them to dry slower, I just add water. So I don't see myself being a fan. But like I said, I've, I, who knows? I've not tried it. I might think it's the most amazing thing of all the things. I'm just going to map out where everything goes really quick. Ooh. This pencil looks like it will be good. I'll still need yellow though. Got a few weird colors that I would normally consider really ugly, but in my um, Karen Josh Luminance, they're gonna be perfect for this. Give me yellow. Yellow, come here. You are not ugly enough yellow. I need bold, ugly yellow. Nope. Oh, you. What are you? You are light yellow glaze. That looks ugly, we'll use it. Um, Petra said, girl, you're talking fast like you have to catch a train or something. No, my brain works faster than everybody else's. So while you may think of that as an insult, it's actually pointing out that my brain works very quickly. It, in, incorrectly sometimes, but quickly. This is how I talk. This is how I always talk. I've had people say that, oh, you've drank, too, it's too much coffee. I'm like, drink like this or talk like this, whether there's coffee involved or not. You want to watch me stumble over my words? Take have me try to talk like right there try to slow down and everything just kind of comes out not in the right order um let's see jason said uh how are the voices uh, how the voices of the frogs they sound so vocal and cold during the spring we have a great time listening to the wild frogs i love these things so the little dart frogs sound kind of like crickets on crack um they're re they're so cute i love their sound and the the bumblebee dart frogs one of the reasons that i chose those and specifically like just the basic leucamellas because they're their chirp i love their chirp and some of the fine spot which are also bumblebee you know the leucamellas are cute but their chirp didn't sound as cool so i'm going to go with with the chirps so yeah these guys here sound like crickets the red-eyed tree frogs sound more like a guttural like kind of a, a dog a low bark mine are not old enough to do that yet Actually, one of them might be, but only the males will chirp. So I don't know yet with my red-eyed tree frogs, the one that, that's doing well, if he's going to be a, I call it a he, but because he was smaller than the other one, but he's grown so fast. I'm not sure if that one's going to be a male or a female. So of the ones that I have coming um, whenever it warms up, those ones, the purple one that I got, it's a purple red-eyed tree frog. So it's a color morph. He's a kind of a wine color and his feet are still the bright orange. Super cute. He is a male. That one I, I got, he's old enough to know it's a male. And then the other one, the albino, I don't know if that one, it's too young. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a male or a female, but I wanted at least one male so I could hear the barking because I think it's adorable. Um, let's see. Hi, Musa. Sarah said, just ordered a new computer after my old one gave up on me. Really excited to start learning digital art. Do you have any tips for a beginner? Aaron Blaze, 
look up Aaron Blaze. If you don't already subscribe to him, if you want to do digital painting, oh my gosh, he is so good. He, I mean, his work is amazing anyway, but he's really good. The things that I have followed, like, um, I got a couple of, I bought some of his brushes, his, his Photoshop, um, digital painting brushes, and some came with tutorials. I followed along with and it was like oh my gosh this is amazing i need to step up my teaching game so good so definitely for digital painting check him out uh let's see uh channel said this has nothing oh wait no first michael perry said please stay warm cold weather is coming your way oh and zarna here sounds like it will be 7 to 14 this weekend in your area three it's supposed to get down to three it keeps changing it's texas who knows it could be 50 for all we know but i don't think it's gonna be that warm but yeah it yes my i currently have my bathtub in there dripping it's kind of driving me crazy but yeah we're, we have to keep i guess stuff dripping all the time and hopefully pipes don't freeze that's a bit of a concern charnell said uh, this has nothing to do with art and is a random question, but do you believe in creepy things like ghosts and aliens? Have, do you have, have you had unexplained experiences? Yes. And when I talk about them, I just make myself sound like a crazy person, but yes, I've experienced ghosts, I guess. I think they're demons, but whatever. Um, I have definitely experienced some stuff in houses I lived in back in California. I'm not experiencing anything in Texas. It's safer here, but there were some scary things in one of the houses that I grew up in. Well, I didn't really grow up there. I lived there for a bit, but yes, I have. Um, and then my friend's grandmother's house, they had messed her. Don't mess around with Ouija boards. Um, you open doors, you don't need to be opening, but yeah, some scary stuff. Like there, yes, I have stories <laughs> there, but I'm going to go into them because I know that's the thing. Like, I know I sound insane when I talk about them, but I also know what I believe and what i've seen and yeah i saw and now i mean go ahead and think i'm crazy i don't know whatever but yes <laughs> um let's see uh kitya said i'm having a lot of problems with feathers and colored pencil how do you create that shadow underneath the grouping of feathers without making it, the area look flat so it depends on the type like here his feathers are super close together he's not really poofed up he will have a shadow right here and he'll have a few shadows, but this guy, his feathers are so fine. For the most part, we're not really defining those. Now, if we let's say we were doing a macaw and they're fluffed up, each under each feather will have a deeper shadow right under the feather and it'll fade out depending on how the lighting is. But it, it depends on the way, oh, this is a little too green. Meh, we'll go with it for the base. Um, it depends on the type of feathers that you're doing. Like the feathers on an owl are going to be different than the feathers on a finch or the feathers on a macaw. So there is going to be difference. And even within this bird, like these feathers here and here are different than here. So you're going, to, oh, those are actually supposed to be more yellow. You're going to have variation depending on that. And what you want to do is really look at your reference photo. Look at it as an abstract shape. Turn it upside down if you need to. Stop looking at it as I'm drawing feathers, but it doesn't look like feathers. Don't look at it that way then. Look at it is an abstract shape what does your just zoom in one little squ like square inch at a time what does your reference photo tell you the information's there it's telling you what to do you have to get your brain to stop trying to override what that reference photo is telling you and do what the reference photo is telling you and get your brain to shut up turning it upside down can sometimes get your brain to like whoa wait what just happened enough that you can then look at the photo and actually do what it tells you to do uh, Sandra said, I bought brush and pencil texture fix it and it'll only have arches hot press and pastel mat. Does it work the same on those papers as sanded paper? Nope. Well, wait, just the texture fixative? I don't know what you would use just, like, I, I don't use just the texture fixative. I use it when I'm using powder blender and that's going to be on sanded paper. Um, if you were talking about the powder blender product as a whole, that does not work on anything but sanded paper or gessoed paper. Those are your two options. Gessoed paper is kind of a pain in the butt. I don't do it anymore. I just use sanded paper. But if it's just touch-up texture, I've never used it on anything but that. So I don't really have a lot of, of, of advice for you there. Experiment, I guess. Charnel said, hello, this is a really random quote. Oh, wait, we got that one. Scrolling. Um, binga, binga or binja? Binja. I don't know. I'm butchering names. Um, that's what I do. I was supposed to draw today alongside with this stream, but I drank too much wine. <laughs> oh my gosh. You and Amy, my slipper. Um, let's see. Like five of you knew what I was talking about there. Uh, tiki, um, scrolling down. Andrea said, my husband worked nights. He is retired now and still manages to take over his area in the studio. 
Uh, Ellen said, hi Lisa, how would you get a tan, pink, tan or pink colors and colored pencils? You couldn't get any individual, if you couldn't get into individual pencils, many supplies are out of stock everywhere, white first and a touch of brown. Yeah, that'll work. Or the brown, I would probably do the brown and then the white on top to lighten it up. Um, would work, should work for you. Practice on a, a scratch piece of paper and see which gives you the better result. But no, you're right. That is the tan and the white would be how, or the brown and the white is how I would do it. Um, do I recommend the Art Sherpa or Angela Anderson for acrylic painting for beginners? Uh, they don't paint the way, well, I don't know anything about Angela, but I know Cinnamon does not approach things at all the same way I do. So for me, for my students, I wouldn't because she's teaching the opposite way I do. I'm not saying one's right or wrong, but it would be hard for me to recommend. Like, I like her. She's actually an awesome lady. But we don't teach the same way, so it would be hard for me to take somebody who's learned the way she does. I'd have to undo stuff to teach them my way. And she would probably say the same about me. So, you know, there's differences. We paint different, our go end goals of what the artwork is supposed to look like is different. And so we approach it in a very different way. So um, I don't want that to be mistaken as me saying, oh, she's bad, no, don't do, no, she's awesome. I love her, but we teach different. So it's not like, I, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't send my students her way other than cause she's entertaining obviously, but I wouldn't like you, if somebody, if somebody learns something a certain way, it's hard to undo that for the way that you do that. And our, our methods are very, very not the same. So in that sense, no, but she's fun. And if you enjoy it, go for it. Um, it, it just depends on what you're going for. Angela, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, let's see. Noreen said, have you ever started a project and then got into it and didn't want to finish the original the way it was in your head and then can't find a, a road to finish it? I've had a couple that way. Not many, but I've had a couple. That's why I try to design things as much as possible in a, I want to put yellow and then green on top, um, design it in Photoshop first. So I can usually figure out what I'm not going to like before I've wasted the time on the paper. or canvas or whatever it is. I mean, some things you can adjust once you've started, but there have been times that things just did not go as planned. And so if I can figure out what to do differently before I hit the paper, that is going to save me a lot of headaches. Um... Nick said, I can see, especially right now, where a longer open time acrylic would come in handy during the underpainting. Yeah, but would they reactivate when I glaze over it? And you know how I glaze. So that's where I'm like, I don't know. But I'm not, I haven't tried them. Maybe they don't reactivate the way I think they would. I don't know. Petra said, um, exactly not an insult, but sometimes hard to follow. Yeah, I'm sorry. And you are right with how fast I talk. I've heard this my whole life. Since I, since I started talking, everyone's been telling me to slow down. And it's like, it does it doesn't. And then I've had people, this is always my favorite one, is when someone decides that I need a speech therapist. Here's a good speech there. Ther I don't have a problem with my speech. I speak fast. That is very different. So uh, pro um, I forget what it's called, but problems with the speech would be when you like keep using filler words and, and, um, 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 like if I talked fast, but I kept using those, I use them like a normal person would. But if I would, a normal, um, is that a thing? But if I were constantly using those fillers and speaking fast, that would be something that would need to be corrected. But in my case, I enunciate, and I do make a point to enunciate because I know that I do speak fast and it's hard for people to understand. So when I start mumbling or slurring things together, that is not going to make sense to anybody. So I do make an effort there. Um, I can't find the right yellow for this. You look good. So, I mean, that's as much as I can do as an effort, but I always, every once in a while, I've had people actually email me thinking they were being super helpful. I'm like, yeah, that's really kind of insulting. And also for somebody who claims they understand speech therapy, you should know I don't have an issue. I just talk fast and I have no intention of slowing that down. It is me. It is how I talk. And that's the other thing. People will say, well, other people will understand you more. Yeah, but then you have people like me who also speak quick, very quickly. Like I can't watch videos where people talk slow. I speed things up usually times two on most people. My brain is like, come on, come on, spit it out, get to the point. So it's very, you also have that side of things. You're not gonna make, like I have to remind myself, you're not gonna make everybody happy. So I I guess the, the thing that when it bugs me is when people start to tell you you need to change for, for them. Like you I, you need me to change for, like that would start to, that, that not really bug me, it just kind of, mildly irritating no not even that kind of makes me laugh like seriously you're serious right now um but yeah 
But oh, anyway, moral of that story was I have heard from both friends and family over the years that the more you listen to me talk, you get used to it. So that is good. Um, let's see. Angel says, Gilmore girls drink coffee too much. I don't, did they? I don't remember. Kitia said, I'm having a lot of problems with feathers and colored pencil. How do you create this? Like, okay, I got that one already. Uh, Shelly said that I like the golden opens more for detailed work that I know may take a bit more, but with the liquid, liquid text basics are my go-to for backgrounds and larger areas that can be done more quickly. Interesting. Mira said there was a morgue where people experienced hallucinations, turned out a ventilator, vibrated at the same frequency as the human eye causing hallucinations. I've heard of stuff like that before, or um, like a deep, a certain vibration that you don't realize you're hearing, but it'll make you feel super uneasy. So people would go into a building that they're like, it's haunted. You just feel creepy when you go in there. And there was something that was causing this low, like really low end vibration. You couldn't hear it. You could feel like barely. And so that's interesting. Um, Sneak said about Ouija boards, too weird and all have been burned, not trashed. Oosh. Um, Shelly said, I wouldn't want to anger it either. Uh, Shelly said, your advice to look at things as abstract shapes and, and turning my artwork has been so helpful to me. Yay! Starving Artist Collective said, speaking of creepy experiences, have you seen the new series of Stephen King's The Stand on Amazon? I have not. It was the first creepy book I read when I was young. It's still creepy. I haven't. Kintia said, thanks so much for the reply. Definitely try both. Yay! Angel said, uh, I'm trying to go quick so I can pay attention. Um, Angel said, I know you hate galleries, but I don't hate them. I definitely don't hate them. But if I wanted to play the gallery game, how would I prepare myself physically and mentally? Always prepare yourself to be declined be re rejected and don't take it as an insult and don't get mad at the gallery for it. The gallery knows their customer. They know what they're going to be able to sell. And unfortunately, in the case of realism, mo and I've talked to many galleries, they just said this, people want abstract stuff. They want like stuff that looks what they think of as art and not a photograph. This isn't something to be rude to the gallery. It's not something to get upset about. I'm going to blend the blue separately and then the purple, and then we'll do the green and the yellow separately so we don't mush all these colors together. But be prepared for a lot of rejection. I mean, there's a story. I think the guy who made KFC was rejected like hundreds of times. He, he went with his recipe, and now he's got like the most famous thing ever. I just butchered that story. But the point is, you're going to get more no's than yeses when you're starting. And sometimes you'll get lucky enough that somebody will like sit down and explain why your work either needs to improve or why it's not a fit for their gallery. That's always very helpful. Um, and I don't think that you need to change to fit the gallery. I think you need to find the right gallery for your work. It's going to show in your work if you're painting something you're passionate about versus trying to fit somebody else's mold. So um, that would be my thing there. I'm not at all anti-gallery. I don't think we have to have them anymore. Like they don't they don't hold all the the cards anymore. Is that how that saying goes? I always screw up these sayings. They don't hold all the cards. We'll pretend that's the right way. We actually have a lot more control because we can sell online now. So you're going to have differences there. Why do I keep going from warm like this there? That looks like me. What am I doing that makes it suddenly turn bluish gray? Like I keep going from zombie to normal human color. But anyway, um, no one cares. Move on, Lisa. I, I am not anti-gallery at all. I don't have any galleries local that I, the few that I've gone to have not been so, like they keep going out of business, honestly. I think everyone else figured out they're unnecessary too. I think you also, we're in a time period where a lot of um, a lot of buyers don't understand that the crap they see, like, well, I don't know if they do. I haven't actually haven't seen it since the whole zombie virus started. But you used to have um, art, cheap, mass reproduced art in front of like grocery stores, and people could buy like hundred and twenty dollars. They get this huge, huge painting. People were just buying that. They didn't understand the value of something that was unique, and act, you know those aren't going to hold value. You had that was a big thing for a while, and I'm not sure. Like I'm just thinking about that now. I have not seen that since. Um, zombie virus so yay good because I think that stuff's crap but anyway mass produced crap but a lot of buyers were, were go that route instead of going and spending twelve hundred dollars on a painting at a gallery so you know you had a lot of things working against us just as artists for a while there um what do I want peach but I think the biggest thing is to prepare for rejection don't let it don't let it like beat you down that is not, um, this is, 
looking at the photo. Okay, three toes in the front, one in the back is what it looks like what these guys have. Wait, that's not that. That's what am I looking at? That's down here. Um, when you go in expecting everyone to love you and love your work, it can be very, very discouraging. And it's the same thing with like art shows. If you go into it with the right attitude, you may think they're amazing. You may have a lot of fun. You have a blast in the whole process, being a part of that. And then you have somebody else who goes in expecting to win. And when they don't win, they're angry. They didn't have fun. They're jealous of the other artists or they're mad that like lesser than art was chosen over theirs that like technically was not as skilled. So it depends. My easel here. I'm hitting everything now. Um, it, you know, the attitude that you go in, I guess that's kind of a life lesson in general. The attitude you go into with it is going to make a difference. So if you go in, like, I'm going to be turned down a bunch of times and that is okay. I just need to find the right gallery, but you're not going to find it until you go out looking. So that would be my advice. Tamara said, first question concerning colored pencil paper, not colored pencil only. That was a spelling error. So sorry. I'm sorry, Tamara. I missed your first part of your question. So now I have no idea what you're talking about. And that is on me. I'm sorry. Andrea said, Doug Flamingo Slipper. Um, thanks, Aunt Adriana. Um, Angel said, could you recommend Lena Dania? Yes, I love Lena Dania stuff. So Lena paints in more, it's not the same exact style as me, but we both do more realism. And um, no, Lena is freaking amazing. Plus, she's a friend of mine. I love her. So I'm all like, well, actually, I know Cindy, uh, Cinnamon too. So... Yeah, no, um, Lena is definitely more, like her techniques are going to be more similar to mine. So like if someone learned from me and then they went and learned with her or the other way around, it's not going to be that crazy different. Again, we, it's uh, different subject matter, some different techniques. Lena's better with painting, like she paints more in a loose style a lot, but she also paints in the clean tight style. So she does both. But yeah, um, we're, we, I would say our styles are more similar than what mine and cinnamons would be, if that makes sense. Not exact, but closer. Um, I am using, all the supplies I'm using, by the way, are listed in the video description. I've got some Derwent Lightfast, I've got Karen Dosh Luminance, I've got Fabrica Estelle Polychromos, and I'm working on Hanson Me 10s. And let's see, Brent says, I've used Me 10s a lot, I've never used Pastel Matte. I'm in a situation I'm in a situation where I have to. Any advice or tips on the difference? I don't, the pastel mat, your colors, like you can be sloppy and they, I have a review on it, but you can be kind of sloppy and they still blend out so, so smooth. Um, even more so than this, than the Me 10s, which is saying something. Those are absolute, like it is a nice paper to work on. Uh, your pencil, it'll feel like you're burning through your pencil really fast, but really it's just picking up a lot of the pigments. So if you blend with OMS, it blends, like your first layer is pretty much all you need. Like that's it. it it's, it's crazy how well that blends. So, I mean, I don't really have any tips. It's an, e it's actually easier, I think, to get good results with that than it is on water, hot press watercolor paper. It's, um, it's an amazing paper. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Um, Hashir said I'm a mini unit YouTuber from Pakistan. I don't do shout outs. I mean, I guess I kind of did it unintentionally. Otherwise, my whole video would be shout out to this person, shout out to that person, shout out to this person. I was watching a live stream last night where they had them shout out because her dog died and wanted them to post a photo of the dog. And I'm like, that's a weird thing to want attention for. I mean, I'm sad that your dog passed, but that's a weird thing to want attention for. Um, let's see. JBC13 Art said... I just found out my Hobby Lobby sells large individual sheets of the Canson Me 10s and the Me 10s art boards. This is both exciting and dangerous information for me. I didn't realize, I haven't looked there. I haven't been there in a while. That is good to know. I'm going to need to do some shopping. Um, I am not doing shout outs. Uh, Jason said, my six year old niece has a speech therapist and it's not bad if you need it. Oh, absolutely. I'm not bad. Like there is a good reason to have speech therapy. Um, absolutely. I've also had a nephew who stuttered when he was young. He lost the stutter when he was older. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I am not bashing speech therapy. I just laugh when people are suggesting it to somebody who does not need it. Like there's nothing. The implication that something is wrong with, with me when it's not like my brain just works this fast. My brain is usually like three conversations ahead of whatever's coming out of my mouth right now. That makes it very hard to follow along because I'm all over. I used to have to, when I do my videos, and I just leave the randomness, or, you know, I, I, I do try to keep it in more of a linear thought process. But when I would edit, it was such a problem because I don't think in a, a super linear linear fashion. I'm all over the place. And so, like, when I go to edit it, I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. Because I explain that 
five minutes later and I have to, and I was having to move clips to make it make sense. So I had to start taking notes to try to help my, like, that was the, my thought process is the issue. Um, let's see. Adriana says I have a PhD on rejection. <laughs> You know, it's good. And that is good for you, too. I think we've gotten to a point where in like culturally people are they don't know how to handle being told that they aren't the best, that that maybe they could try harder. Um, everyone's supposed to be the same. We're all equal. We all got a participant. Well, I didn't. I was old. I'm, I'm the, the age before that. I'm the age that created the freaking participation trophies, I think. But everyone we wanted, everyone's a winner. Now, some people tried harder than others. Some people are just better at certain things than others. That's okay. Find the thing you're best at. And we've gotten to a stage where pe so many people cannot handle the rejection. It's actually really frustrating and not healthy. Like we, you're going to be rejected and when you can't handle it. And that's, what's funny. I see this, this age group, not everyone, obviously, but there's this age group right now where they can't handle being told no, like in the workforce is a real problem because they're told like my boss is abusive because he told me to do my job. That's not abuse, by the way, that is somebody telling you to work that you need to get back to work. Oh, he didn't smile and praise you while doing it. And that's the problem. So we have this group that right now cannot handle the rejection. And it's like, it's sad, honestly, because we've raised them this way. They don't, they can't, you have to, rejection is a part of life. And like, if I go to a gallery and they're like, yeah, it's not a fit for me. I'm not, it's, it doesn't affect me. I'm okay with that. Like, I understand that as a part of life and my stuff was not a fit for that. There's a group of people who they get rejected once and they're like, I'm never painting again. This is the end of the world. And I don't want to see that for anybody. So yeah, no, rejection's a part of it and we need to get over it, you know, being thinking it is the end of the world. Um, let's see. Oh no, Doug says since I can read upside down as well, upside down, right side up, turning the an image upside down doesn't work. What I have found that does help is keep close eye so that that kills your depth perception or uh, keep one eye closed. Yes, that, you know, that's a good bit of advice. Um, the other thing is, is I'm very nearsighted. So taking my glasses off gives me much more of an overview without getting lost in the details. That works for me too. Definitely. That's good. I didn't even think of closing one eye. That would work too. That's good advice. Angel said, honestly, I asked you that because I, I just got rejected. The curator told me that I should look smart presentation wise and they're looking for ambition and vision and vision from me okay good so they just gave you valuable feedback for free that's freaking awesome i like that this gallery spoke to you and didn't just say no i really like that they gave you this feedback and i know you're young you've got time you're is, is really going to be they used to say that you wouldn't make it as it like make a good living as an artist you wouldn't really make it until you're like in your 40s true for me doesn't need to be true for a lot of you guys now because the internet you can do this much younger um you can build a name for yourself younger but that is that that was they gave you good information they gave you something to work towards like i remember um this story a friend of mine had another friend so friend of a friend type thing he was going to galleries and he was getting rejected and he was getting really frustrated and this was probably 25 years ago and one gallery finally told him look, I can see potential here, but you're not there yet. Go paint 100 things and then come back to me. Sure enough, he came back. He did it. He took that advice. He went, he painted 100 things. And that was what he needed to tighten up his skill to just make, he had the vision, but he had to perfect the technique. And he tightened that up, made everything good, went back. And he, they said, and my friend said he sold out like his first showing, everything sold. So it's, when you get advice from that like that that is awesome but the, the thing is to learn to take it as good feedback from somebody who knows the business and if you get somebody who is like oh your style's terrible i just don't like your your stuff okay well that gallery is obviously not a fit for you maybe they they might be rude to you sometimes but i also would rather know that's not a fit and i'm not going to waste my time trying to get in here i need to go find the gallery who knows how to sell my style to people because that person doesn't know how to sell my style. That's not their customer base. I need someone whose customer base is going to be interested in what I do. So it sounds like they gave you, I, I, I'm really happy that they gave you some feedback somewhere to, to, you know, gives you somewhere to start focusing. So that's good, but don't let it discourage you either. This is, this is good. 
Tamara said, I don't think my first two questions arrived or didn't come, but can you please help me suggest what to look for in colored pencil paper that is not a specific brand name? Thank you. No, I can only give you specific brand names. There's nothing like, make sure the corner's bent backwards. I don't know what you're looking for. But I can give you brand names. That's, sorry. Um, maybe somebody else can. Uh, let's see. Facebook user said, hi Lisa, love your tutorials. I'm fairly new at painting and using pastels. I recently just bought the 60 of Carbothella pastel pencils and like them okay. Would like to purchase a few of the Derwent Light Fast and was wondering which colors are a must for landscape and animal wildlife. I just want to get 10 to 12. I don't know for those specifically. Derwent Light Fast, hands down, all of the purples are a must for me because that's not something you're really going to get in other colors. But as far as the landscapes, I mean, still purple. You use that. I would use that to shade in my greens, to shade most things. I mean, I'm doing it right now. But... Um, I'm not really sure as far, like, I'm not sure what colors for those specific things that I would sit and it would take me forever to sit here and go through and go, oh, get this color, get that color. Um, purples, all pur nightshade, nightshade's a must have for me in the Derwent Light Fast set. But, um, you, you look through the colors and see what, what, what you're drawn to, but nightshade would be my must have. Um, hi, Joanna from Portugal. Thank you. Angel said, oh, it was a bit disheartening, but I gained wisdom from the curator. They don't want an artist that would further the relationship and not just a one-time thing. Good. Good. That's awesome. Jason said, Mike said, is king on selling mass groups of artwork or studios. And the percentage that they take is a lot. But boy, that's scary. Does, do the taxes get added in? Um, it depends on what their situation their their agreement is on, on as far as taxes. I mean, I have to, anything that sells, I have to pay tax on top of that, whatever I got from it. But they do take a lot, but if it sells, so this is the thing that I do like about galleries. I may, I need a, okay, blue. I, a big painting, like let's say a big 30 by 40 inch canvas, that's gonna be hard for me to ship and not have it get damaged. It's going to cost me 60 to $100 to ship that. Um, and that's just within the U.S. I can't ship it outside the U.S. It's, God, the price gets insane. I tried doing that to Canada once. Oh, that was not good. Um, never again. And it got lost. But they found it eventually. But anyway. Um, I need lighter than that. Are you lighter than that? Yeah, you're lighter than that. Um, don't roll away. Get back here. Um, I'm okay with them taking a percentage on something that I was not going to be able to sell on my own. And these bigger paintings are going to be a challenge. Like it is hard to sell a painting that's that, that's that big. One, it's hard to ship, but it's also hard, like on a more expensive painting, even if it's smaller, it's hard to get someone to spend, you know, one or $2,000 or more on something they've not seen in person. Now, if you've developed a name for yourself, that's different. But until you've done that, it's going to be very hard. And the gallery is going to have a better chance of, you know, because they can see in person. They, they, they trust that and I think part of it is just part of it is probably the trust of is a couple thousand dollars they're even going to send it to me um and everything well hopefully everything looks better in person anyway so there's that side of things but um in that case if I wasn't able to sell it then them taking a cut is still I'm still making more than I made on my own on it so it's not like I'm anti galleries taking their cut or anything like that it's just are they making the money? Are they working for it? If it's better for me to sell myself, like why would I go? You have to ask yourself, is it better for me to go to the gallery versus selling it myself? Why would I do one over the other? There are pros and cons to everything. So you've got to figure out which is going to be better fit for that. Maybe it's just that painting, maybe, or a collection of paintings that you're just having a hard time with online, whether it be the size, the price, whatever. So are they advertising for you? Are they, do they have their, is it insured if it gets stolen? You know, you've got questions you've got to ask um, pros and cons of. Uh, let's see. Tamara said, the, the second question is that I tried using hot press watercolor for my colored pencil work, but the paper just can't handle the paper. The paper just can't handle the paper in which the paper is coming out. What? I'm sorry, Tamara. I have no idea what you're asking. The second question is that I tried using hot press watercolor paper for my colored pencil work. The paper just can't handle the paper in which the paper is. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm very lost here. Uh, Shelly said, do you have any advice for shading yellow in colored pencil? I haven't been able to find the right tone where it appears almost gray. Yes. Shade with violets, oranges. You can try with orange if you want it to be more like stand out a little bit and then go into magentas and then down to your purples for your darkest, like if it needs to be really dark. So here, let's say this area, I'm going to have to shade. We can go ahead and do that now. I'm going to use, this one is red violet. Let's go with that. So I'm starting with that magenta color. 
and we're just gonna let that blend in because I want this to be fairly muted. I actually want it to be a bit darker than what my reference photo is. The reference photo is pretty bright. I'll probably bl blend a little bit of orange too. I wanna make sure I'm going the direction of the feathers here. Don't blend with black. You throw black in there and you just created a muddy, ugly mess. Um, let's see. Linda said, at school I used to teach, at, there was a ghost. I found out about it when I was, when the room I moved to, a box put on top of a shelf kept being put on the floor every night. What? That is crazy. Um, let's see. Kelsey said, I'm currently obsessed with painting honeybees with dripping honey around them. Any chance you do a honeybee in a painting soon? Most likely, because I love bees. Yes. Linda said, I asked the janitor and she told me it was a ghost. Others that had been in that room had the same problem. Like a teacher had said, see, she looked like an old teacher. Weird. That is so crazy. And I would not, like, that would be scary. Um, let's see. Thank you, Molly's Fine Art, for the super chat. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm gonna cry. That's so sweet. Um, okay, focus, Lisa, don't cry. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Mike is sending a link to something. I have no idea what that is, Mike. It looks like a file. I can't see that. Uh, sorry. Oh, Tamara said, I'm sorry I did not finish my reply. I don't know what, why the hot press watercolor paper does, does want to take the colored pencil. Can you please help me? I'm sorry, Tamara. I have no idea what's going on. The work, I think that the super chat gives you a limited amount of space and, or not super chat, just the chat. I can't, I don't know what's going on in your case. It, it, I feel like this is one of those questions where I definitely need more information. It doesn't take, like, okay, I'm going to assume this is what you mean and this may not be what you mean. So let, let's just talk about hot press watercolor paper. If it is not taking enough layers, if that's what your problem is, and I'm going to pretend that's what your problem is, it may not be. But let's say it's the issue is that it's not taking enough layers. I can use this to shade over some of the darker purples too. But if it's not taking enough layers, your pro a couple things can happen. One, the type of pencils you're using. So like if I use color soft, um, it does not matter how much pressure I add, it is not taking many layers. Prismacolor, going to take less layers than what I can get out of polychromos. The next thing that it's going to be is, let's say I'm working with polychromos and I'm still not getting many layers. I'm pushing too hard then. So if you push too hard, you're not going to get enough layers. That will make a difference. The other thing could be the paper. If the paper is just too smooth, that's what, like Bristol Vellum, that does not take many layers. So those are going to be your main factors on when pencil just doesn't want, it doesn't want to take more layers. Oh, it's a thing of the red sleeve. Message, give, send me a private message, Mike. I want to see that. I've been interested in that project. Um, Mike is one of the owners over at Glass Aquatics. It's an aquatic store here in Texas, and they, they've got some projects going on that I am definitely interested in seeing. I need a brighter red. What do I have? I have like a really... You might work. Ooh, yes, you. So I want something that's a bit more opaque. This one is the... Scarlet from Karen Dosh Luminance. Um, Paula said, I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose, sing with me. What? What? I think I'm not getting something there. Um, Nat said, don't know if you've ever seen my comment, my beloved grandmother, she was Polish, sounded like you, and I find it, find you soothing and smart. Oh, thank you. I've been told I sound like a chipmunk on crack, or I am chipmunk on speed. And one of my favorites, and me and my husband still walk around saying this because it's hilarious, the person who, like, was obviously had their own issues, but said that I was annoying as, uh, it was F-U-U-U-U-U-U-C-K. Like, it was as long as you're annoying as, uh, Matt. It's really funny, and we, we run with it. But um, I like your comment way better, although that one was funny. I mean, they weren't trying to be funny. They were trying to be rude, but it's... It was funny. Um, let's see. Gypsy Heart said, do you know why they discontinued the pigment markers? I sent them a message to ask because I couldn't find any comments anywhere about it from Windsor and Newton. I have a feeling that they just didn't take off, that none of the people were using them, which is disappointing because they were a really good product. Like, I really like the Windsor and Newton pigment markers. I suspect people weren't buying them, which is annoying. It's like everyone's buying Copics, which are not light fast. Here's a product that's light fast, and they're like, meh. So, I mean, it happens. I think if I had to guess, that's what it was, but I don't know for sure. Um, and then Finery Studio said, Jerry's Hyderama is running a sale today on Arches Paper. I might have ordered a lot of it. Nice. 
I may have to look into that. Tamara said, I'm so sorry, last question. Can you suggest which, don't apologize, I'm glad, glad for your guys' questions. Uh, what to practice drawing when you're a beginner like me? I really appreciate it. I always suggest roses because roses are very forgiving. Like you do not have to be very good and a rose is still going to look like a rose. So when you're starting off, I think that just the mindset, if it's encouraging, roses are good. But let's say you just think roses are boring. Like, why would I do that? Like when I started with art, the concept of doing any still life was like, why would I do that? That's boring. Now I love still life. But at the time, I didn't understand like the interest of lighting and placement. And like, I definitely have an appreciation that I didn't when I was younger. I was not going to learn from still life. Like I would not have drawing a rose was not going to be interesting for me. So I didn't do it. But if you are interested, you think roses are extra pretty. I think that's a really good thing, a good place to start because you've got curves. You're practicing curves. You've got shadows, get a good photo of one, but you've got a lot to work on there. And it's a rose. If you miss a petal, no big deal. Let's say you're drawing a bird. I miss his eye. He's going to look a little funky. So, um, that, but draw what is interesting to you. For me, I was really only interested in whales and dolphins. So that's mainly what I drew. It's not even what I'm like telling everyone else to do, but that was those, that's what interested me. And that's what I learned with. So as much as I can say, yeah, roses are great. If they don't interest you, you're not going to learn as much from that as the thing that interests you. Any drawing is good. Eric is sad. Would you, would your green apple tutorial be too advanced for a real beginner? No, I don't think so. Jason said, wasn't saying that you were bashing therapy. I was saying that you didn't need it. Others need, need a speed up thought process. And oh, people make corrections and it's the same as a put down. <laughs> yes. Um, and I understood what you're saying there. Are you proud of me right now? I actually understood what you were saying. Uh, Starving Artist Collective said, looking at your magnolia today and it, I realize it looks hard, like it's metal, obviously a steel magnolia. <laughs> I don't know what kind it is. Um, and Nalia said, love your work. Thank you. Newbie question here. I, am I able to create leaf? I'm able to create leaf-like textures with colored pencils, but struggling with smooth or glossy surfaces. Any tips on how to improve that? So usually, like if you're trying to make something glossy, it's the contrast. Make your lights really dark, light and your darks really dark. Like that high contrast will make it look shiny. Um, using a different microphone today? Yes, this is my Blue Yeti. I have to work out the, the wireless issue. Sarah said, you shared the story about how you decided you wanted to pursue art as a career to remember when you realized that you made it, i.e. you'd be able to make a living off of it and wouldn't have to get another job. Um, it wasn't an issue of realizing as much for me as it was an issue of deciding this is what I'm going to do. So it, it, I guess it was a little bit different. There was never like a point of I made it. It was more like I'm doing this. I'm going to make this happen. Um, unlike my cooking attempts, luckily the art thing worked out. Katrina said that nightshade is literally my favorite pencil overall. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I would say nightshade and kaput mortem. I use them in everything. There's nothing I don't use those pencils on. So yeah, right there with you. Let's get some highlight around his eye here. Now this is not standing out that much. If I need to, I can come, oh, that is working okay. I can come back there with touch of texture, titanium white if it doesn't, and then put blue over it. But it looks like we're okay now. And what I use that nightshade, like here, his eye needs to be black. I'm going with nightshade first. I can come back with black if I need it darker, but I will almost always use nightshade because it's all, it's like almost black. It's purple. It's a dark. I mean, it looks black. It's dark, dark purple. And it has so much more depth than black does. It is amazing. Uh, Molly's Fine Art said, thanks for the tips. Love the chat last week when you got into niches. My colored pencils are breaking a lot lately. Light, fast, and luminance. What sharpener to use? You just need a new sharpener. Any sharpener is going to be better if they're breaking a lot. So I typically go with like the Coom. Is this one even Coom? I don't know. Magnesium. Yeah, that one's Coom. But these little metal Coom sharpener, and they do have to be replaced, or, or you can replace the, the blades um, every so often. But that's mostly what I'm using. I have this one I've been using a lot, but it's going to start getting dull. Yep, that. No, what does that one say? m &R from Germany. So a little three hold one, different sizes there. So those are normally what I use. Uh, Sarah said, I laughed a lot in your art room video. Guess the size of the dog does not matter. They're always going to watch us struggle. Yeah, he's just standing there wagging his tail like, oh, this is fun. What are you having trouble with? Let me stand in your way. Uh, Paul said, quick tip, never submit realistic pieces in galleries that cater to current contemporary pieces. Learned it the hard way right that yes and i think that that's part two so as an artist i think when we're looking at galleries we need to research the gallery we're looking into walking into a gallery that only sells contemporary or abstract stuff 
showing them our realism and expecting them to be interested just shows we did no research on our part either. So it, it makes us look kind of bad when we're presenting our work in a gallery that doesn't even sell anything like our work. That's a big deal. That's a good point, Paul. Uh, Tamara said, I asked, for not, or I asked not for a specific brand name because I am a beginner and can't get good brand names like the ones you mentioned on your channel around me and it's hard to find in my country in South Africa. Yeah, I don't have really, I mean, there, there's nothing specific. I can just give you brand names, unfortunately. I'm not sure um, there, and see it even then, I'm like, I'm, I'm going back to giving a brand name. Yeah, I, I don't know, like there's not a quality I'm looking for. I can just tell you different. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm no help, sorry. Um, Joanna, do I recommend any books for beginners? Books about color theory mostly. Um, what is it? James Gurney has a good one on color and light. Um, he's really good. Anything by James Gurney is going to be good. Um, for, and you said for, did you say colored pencil specifically? Just books for beginners about color theory. James Gurney is probably going to be the one that I can think of off the top of my head that's good. Look for, for color theory stuff by him. Uh, let's see, Janet said, I saw a video on YouTube of a lady using ink tents. She was showing how after they dry, you re can re-wet them. Do you know if that's true? So what she probably did is she put down the pencil on the paper or the block directly to the paper and then wet them. If once the, the pencil will always kind of reactivate, like you never really blend it out all the way, but like the way that I work with ink tents, I'm mixing it the ink tense blocks like I would a pan watercolor. So it's already really thinned out and then I apply that to the paper. That's not moving once it's dry. That's it, that's done. It's already been like blended out, I guess. Um, but when you put the ink tense pencil in add water, yeah, they're gonna, those are gonna activate there and blend out. So it depends on, like it depends. There's too many factors involved there to have a simple answer. But like when I paint on the ink tense and it dries, it's permanent, that's it, it's not moving. But if I go on top of the pencils and blend that out, then it shouldn't move kind of, but you'll always have these little chunks in there that you didn't quite blend all the way. And those are what reactivates. Um, let's see. Oh, that's just nice. Um, Charnel said, every time you get a hate comment, remember that the, there are nearly 300,000 people that like you all. Thank you. That is a good way to look at things. See attitude. It's everything. Um, did I draw some astronomy theme? I mean, I've done some space scenes. Yeah. And it's funny because it brings up the flat earthers and they entertain me. I'm kind of sad that YouTube jumped all over the, oh, it's, it's false information. We don't want to, we don't want to share that. That's funny. False information though. Flat earthers are so entertaining to me. And I apologize if you're a flat earther, but no, I don't. You're funny. I love you. Um, let's see. Yeah. Every time I do space stuff that comes out, uh, there'll be comments like that. That's so funny. Um, I think it's funny, but I think it's funny because it's funny. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do you have any subject you are not really interested in to paint? Sorry for the bad English, but I'm Italian. I have bad English and my English is my native language. So no judgment. Um, send me some help for my language, please. Um, let's see. Uh, a subject I'm not really I don't like man-made stuff that much I like like decaying buildings are interesting to me like but like a healthy good shape building not super interested cars planes trains anything that's like man-made not interested unless it's decaying then it interests me so that's I guess what would be my thing uh, Gypsy Heart said, I was like, no, I just started working in pigment marker last year, so I bought one of every color I could find to keep my collection going as long as possible. My wallet cried. Yeah, I've got enough that I can do quite a few projects, but it's definitely disappointing that, um, yeah, it, I, I, it disappointed me. Um, let's see. Yeah, and there, you're going to have volume variation. Like when I'm facing my mic right here, it'll be loud. And when I turn over here, it's going to get quiet until I get my wireless one set up again. We're unfortunately going to have to deal. I'll try to get, I'm going to mess with that this weekend as a plan. We'll see. Sandra said, I have a full set of polychromos, could not resist buying luminance. Thank you now 
I have more pencils than I need. No more buying. Lisa said light vest purples are great. Guess what? I was going to say, when, as I'm reading this, I'm going, but you don't have light vest yet. Gotta have light vest. Like, I'm so happy Derwent, like, really got into the pencil game. Like, Derwent, their thing is a pencil company, but they didn't have a good, like, a pencil that a professional artist is like, these are must-haves. And now they're at, like, the top of the list, or, you know, up there with the top. They, they play with the big kids now. I love it. Um, thanks, Mike. Gypsy Heart said, I have the full Derwent. Oh, I got that one. I'm just scrolling. I'm trying to get caught up really quick and then I can maybe pay attention to what I'm doing. Clark said, I'm supposed to be making some pieces for a local gallery and the owner did ask for specific subject matter. So it's true to and important to know the type of gallery that they are. The type of art gal art I cannot talk or read the gallery chooses to display. Yes, absolutely. Um... Paul said, check Tanyan Shetseva. I'll have to look that up. Link me. Link me on one of our social media things. Um, I think you're on my Facebook. Link me. I, I'm not going to remember this. Let's see. Do you have, I got that one. Oh, thank you, MM Fine Art Studio. So you are my biggest art inspiration. Oh. Sarah said, I'm a proud member of Derwent Lightpass Nightshade Fan Club. <laughs> uh, nothing compares. Prettiest color ever. Absolutely. Paul said, it sounds crazy, but I've heard a... A, I can't, is that how you say it? In my room, and I think someone's in the room. Should I call the police? I mean, it depends on what reaction you're looking for. I have a feeling they'll laugh at you. But, um, I mean, if you do record that so we can then laugh too. Um, I'm thinking the police are not who you need to call. Okay. Yeah, and this is gonna going back to like scary sounds and stuff that will make me sound crazy. One of the big things I wanted a new house instead of a used house was I'm like, oh, it'll be nice and clean, and no one else has like played with Ouija boards inside, so it makes me feel safer. We have stories. My sister, so my sister go. I'll tell this story. When they were teenagers, her she was friends with Jessica Alba. Um, we we're all from Claremont, California. Her she was one of the few friends I liked of my sisters. They're not in touch. I doubt Jessica even remembers I I'm alive, so this is not like a, hey, we're friends. We're not. But back, you know, when they were 12 years old, they were friends. So um, Chris, uh, Jessica and her cousin, and I think some other people, I forget her cousin's name. Um, I remember that she was blonde, though. They were screwing around with the Ouija board, and stuff started happening in that house to where some of them were like, we're coming over to your house. We're like, it's not, no, no. Um, yeah, they, they regretted screwing around with that Ouija board. They just started having weird stuff um happened with that i remember that was one of the first stories i'd heard that and then my friend's grandmother um everything was fine in their house and it was weird because she was this weirdly like super super religious person and the grandmother her tara's Ter grandmother had if i'm remembering this is an old story so i'm sure i'm getting these facts wrong not that anyone would know the difference but um she her and her sister her and somebody else decided to use a ouija board to contact their dead mother but it was saying swear words now these ladies did not swear at all and it was spelling it wrong it was like f-u-k missing the c and from that point on the stories of stuff that happened in the house not just from them but like tara her older brother had lived there for a while and this was not he screwed around a lot like messing with us because we were young you know his younger sister and her friend but his girlfriend was not like that and she had the same experiences like there were some um and then one of their friends had lived in the house too Everyone who lived in that house had like crazy, like, I don't even want to be here stories. Um, let's see. How did I discover the colored pencil medium? When I was in high school, I, I was put into a, um, I changed high school. So Claremont High School is the school that I went to until my, the end of my junior year, I moved family drama. So I moved to another school and that one um, had an art program that my previous school didn't, which is weird because Claremont was more of an uppity, like we had an orchestra in our high school, which most orchestras have a band, but not an orchestra. So anyway, kind of weird differences there. So I need white. There we go. So we, um, when I switched schools, they just needed somewhere for me to go for the end class. But I already had like, ex even though I hadn't taken their beginning art classes, they still put me in their AP studio art, which I guess wasn't part of the process you're supposed to do to the beginning. Anyway, I showed them some of my work. They put me into that one. And in that class, you didn't really learn. It wasn't your normal like beginner art class. It was here are the supplies. I want you to use colored, I think like colored pencils. This was probably one of the first times I really used it. I, when I find this, I'll share it with you guys sometime, but it was, they wanted you to draw translucence, like something that was transparent, translucent. 
your subject matter could be anything you wanted. So everyone else is like glasses, like different colored glasses and jars. Not me. I drew blue translucent tigers. I should have known then something was wrong with my brain, but like my, that's what my brain jumped to. Oh, see through tigers. So um, yeah, that's that was the first time I really remember using colored pencils. It was Prismacolor and I still have that set. Um, the original, that's back when Prismacolor were actually made well. So um, I'm old, but yeah, that was where I got started with colored pencils. I am, I am using the Derwent Light Fast Caran d'Ache Luminance and Fabric Castell Polychromos. Priscilla said, I see people posting their artwork of Disney characters and such. I know you've talked about this before, but I can't remember. Do you know if this would be a copyright issue? Absolutely. Anytime, like me drawing Game of Thrones, technically copyright. Game of Thrones can come after me and go, uh, take that down or we're suing you, or they could just sue me. They technically have the rights. Now, Game of Thrones promoted fan art they actually encouraged us to do fan art so it's different disney does not disney is very like a little mom and pop store was making like mickey mouse cakes was one of the things they offered for chris for things and disney's like ah nope you better stop that somebody painted a disney mural like a disney character mural on a wall at like a school or a nursery or something told nope you gotta paint that up paint over that that can't be up we didn't do it you can't have it so um yeah no it depends on what it is disney i'm not messing with disney disney is strict and controlled and the this is the thing People are like, oh, it'll be fine. You won't have any issues. You may or may not. Do you want to risk it? We can go back to the Obama poster. And the, God, the misinformation on the Obama hope poster was hilarious to me. So just a simple, this is a very simplified version of this. Guy did the Obama hope poster, did not get permission from the photographer to use it. Photographer re recognized his photo and went after the guy who did the artwork. I would have thought the artwork was different enough. Like, how did you even know that was your photo? Because it was popper. I, it surprises me that he knew it was his, but whatever he did. And the, the misinformation that you will get from many artists is, oh, the artist won. He didn't, he didn't, um, the people suing him didn't win. No, he, he, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Somebody help me here. He, was it, he settled. That's the word I'm looking for. I guess they settled. He didn't lose, but he didn't win. And he had to settle because he knew he was not going to win. The law will side with the copyright owner or the trademark owner. So it's not worth the risk. And that's the funny thing about the Obama Hope poster or how many artists are like, no, see, it's fine. I have people in my comments argue this. I kicked people out of the art group for sharing, for insisting on misinformation and leading people into bad legal advice. That's, that will get you kicked from my group. You start giving bad legal advice to people, I'm not getting in trouble for that. You, you're you're going to have to go. But you have um, people who, you're, you, you'll probably be okay. Will you get caught? Probably not. Can you guarantee it? And is it worth the risk if you do? I don't think it's worth the risk. I stopped doing fan art altogether. The only fan art I might do is like a World of Warcraft type thing. And again, it's fan art for me, not for anything to sell, nothing to make prints. And some people will say, well, as long as you don't sell or make prints, it's fine. Not always. And as far as making a video, I've got ads on the videos. Then I'm making a profit off their character. You know, so that does, that absolutely can get in trouble. And a lot of people think that it's worth the risk. I don't. And the funny thing is too, at least in my case, people had told me, oh, you need to draw celebrities because you'll get more views that way. My celebrity portraits never got any more views really than my regular portraits. There was no, there's, for me, and this is going to depend on the person, there was no, nothing was worth the risk. Like the, the, pay, the reward was not worth the risk at all. They, I'm like, why would I do this then? But that was in my case. So you have people who just do celebrity portraits and it's fine. And most of the time it will be, it probably, they probably won't get caught. I don't think it's worth, worth risking. see. MM Fine Art Studio said I was home alone one night when I was 14 and swore someone was in the basement. I called my dad at, and the line went dead. Mid conversation. The cops came. Turned out it was a raccoon. Oh my gosh. I would have been so scared though. That's so funny. I mean, probably wasn't funny at the time. It's a little funny to hear now. Uh, Katrina said that strictness of Disney reminds me of Nintendo. Yeah, in Disney, like the people who work with Disney on different things, they're really strict. Like it has to be this shade of yellow. Like they're very strict when people do work with them on things. 
Um, let's see. A lady, I just said a lady where I live was making Disney birthday cards and selling them. She got the letter basically telling her to stop or we'll sue for millions. I have Road to California calling from Upland. No. Hold on. Let me block this number too before they keep calling. The spam calls are just insane. And they just keep, like if I don't block it, they'll just call right back. There we go. Um, let's see. Angel said, you break the rule, you're out. Mickey Mouse ain't playing games no more. <laughs> Clark Reinhardt said, I did a Moana painting for a family member and she wouldn't even share it on any of my social media, not risking anything knowing Disney doesn't play when it comes to the art. Yeah, I wouldn't risk it. Um, let's see. I even pulled, I had some stuff that I had done, like Scarlett Johansson, the old video of her, her, um, and it wasn't even well done. It was one of my first colored pencil portraits. I had to get used to that medium for colored pencil, but I had a video of that on YouTube. I pulled that. I pulled a lot of my portraits, um, that were celebrities that I had done because I didn't realize how serious it could be. And I'm like, I don't want to get a strike on my channel. It is not worth it. So I pulled them. I think I still have Jon Snow up, but like I said, Game of Thrones has been pretty good about promoting or encouraging fan art so i'm like probably okay there but um serving artist collective said think one of the best creepy things are the weeping angels in doctor who who don't blink are those the ones that you look away and then they move and you look away and they move closer because that is what sometimes i watch the videos of my red eye tree frogs and that really looks like that like they are not um you, you look at it and they're in one place and you look away and you look back and they've moved like an inch forward, but you never saw them move. It's kind of funny. Uh, let's see. Where are my thoughts about mixed media collage art? I like it as long as the mixed media, like the artist is choosing mediums that are compatible. So you do have a lot of people who will choose stuff that really shouldn't be used together. So I'm not going to be a huge fan of that, like putting acrylics on top of colored pencil. That is not, um, it's not archival, not a good idea, but like overall, as far as just like actual collage art or mixed media, I am a fan. So the white over this will just lighten it. It won't actually make it white. Just getting a little texture in there. Need to get some more darks. Uh, Ludwig said, hello, I've never watched any of your videos. The stream just popped up in my recommendation. Lovely birds. Oh, thank you and welcome. Yeah, YouTube has been, so I did the video, the art supply haul, and I'm not sure how much of it, like those of you who are YouTubers, this may be of interest of you of, of trying to get, you know, people back to watching the stuff. So I stopped uploading a lot of stuff. I was just doing the live streams and YouTube stopped suggesting my content. So P I kept hearing from people like, oh, YouTube didn't let me know. They didn't notify me you had a new video or they didn't notify me. And I hear this all the time. And I know that my YouTube analytics, they aren't suggesting my stuff. So I did the, the art supply haul and that video did more than double, like better than it normally, a normal video would do. And then YouTube started suggesting me again. So I'm coming up in more people's feeds who are subscribed and more people like my last three videos. So that one, the putting my cabinet together that went up yesterday and then the watercolor video. Now, maybe those were just videos people were more interested in because it's a little bit different than usual. That is possible. But people have been getting suggest even YouTube analytics, they are suggesting my content a lot more than they were. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, maybe I should just use that as an excuse to buy more stuff than I can make more videos from. Um, let's see. Angel said, how come I'm still not subscribed to you? Is this a glitch? I'm pretty sure I get notified and subscribed years ago. You know, they do this. They, there's a, they say it's a glitch, although YouTube says it's not happening, but we've had people like on YouTube who have proven that where they're like, I got unsubscribed. I didn't unsubscribe to this person. And YouTube is like, oh no, that's not happening. They had to have unsubscribed. No, YouTube is unsubscribing people regularly from channels so check everyone who you think you're subscribed to because there's a good chance you got unsubscribed so yeah no that's a, a thing um some people are calling it a glitch although some people started calling it a feature because it's like if it keeps happening then it's just a feature and not a glitch but yeah no that's a thing sandra said i have sold a drawing of elvis used a reference photo but changed all of it in photoshop just needed the photo as a reference for his face could that have got me in trouble too or is that allowed if it was recognizable, I mean, yeah, the Obama Hope poster is such a great example of that. I don't think it looked like the photo. I, it was done in pop art. It looked so different and they still got in trouble for it. So I would say, yes, here's the thing. You sold it years ago. Who's going to know? No one's going to. So you've got that side of it. 
for me, I've done it before when I didn't realize what an issue that was. I had sold a James Marsters. Someone hired me to do a graphite James Marsters and I sold it to him. I don't make prints of any of that and I, I wouldn't do it again, but I didn't realize at the time that that was such an issue. And so am I going to get in trouble for it at this point? Not likely. No one's going to know. I mean, I don't know you guys, but I mean, it's not something that I'm promoting or, or, or continuing to sell prints and that sort of thing, but you you should be fine. I mean, technically, legally, they found out you could be. How? I think you're 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 more, you're most likely on the safe side. I mean, you never know. But I would not make prints. That's for sure. Like even if you're like, no, I changed it enough. I doubt it. If it looks like him, you couldn't have changed it enough. That's like the thing. Angel said, um, I clicked the subscribe button. Would that unsubscribe me? If it did, just click it again. Um, I've done that before just to make sure. Like if I was like, wait, am I subscribed? What? Um. Angel said, speaking of Buffy, are you aware of the current shenanigans to the creator too? I was watching that earlier. Um, was it jo the Josh Whedon? So he he is like super uber male feminist type thing, but it turns out he was actually here treating all the women. I'm like, oh, that's not surprising. He was treating all the women pretty crappy. Um, now, of course, it's a he said, she said. I don't know any of the people involved, so I can't tell you if I believe or don't believe. I just was like, wow, that's kind of an interesting thing to come out. I'm not, t I'm not generally going to be one who jumps on, oh my gosh, that's definitely true. Although I will say when as many people have come out that worked with him and all say the same thing, then I start kind of believing them when that many people, but even them, we've had too many cases where people came out with different movements of accusing somebody of things and it turned out that they were lies. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not one who jumps to believing all just because somebody made a claim. I believe it. I'm not that person. I, but in a case when it keeps like a lot of people are saying the same thing about one person, it's like, huh, now that's kind of interesting. I mean, it doesn't surprise me though, just from what I have seen of him and things that he said where I'm like, huh, I would call that a little bit of a red flag, but, um, he, yeah, that, that's about as far as I'll go into that conversation. Uh, do I have any advice on shading yellow? I find it so tricky. Yes. Shade yellow, like here, I use magenta. Actually, let's blend that out. Um, I shade it with magenta, purples, or oranges. Purple's my last choice. First would be red and, or, I'm sorry, magenta and orange. Try shading with that. And if you need to go darker, then go into your darker purples. So let's go ahead and smudge this out. And this guy won't be finished today. We'll finish him up next week with the final details because we've got to do the touch-up texture titanium white mixture too. But we've still got to do... The, the other bird over here. So we're just kind of getting this blocked in. With a colored pencil, like anything else, it is a layering process. This is not a paint by number. You're just gonna layer till it looks good. Now, ideally, if you're, you don't wanna push too hard because if you do push too hard, you are limiting how many layers you can do. I don't push very hard, so I can do lots of layers. And then Kansami tens. I, I'm usually pretty good about getting a lot of layers on this paper, but let's see. So we've got that. What else do we need to start doing? We need to start getting the details in here so I can start getting the looks of the feathers. Just making these little lines here with the blue. They don't want to completely cover. Actually, I need to switch over to green a little bit here. And I've got to let, this is the problem with the Kansami Tens and why this kind of takes a, an extra long time. This needs to dry before you go over it. And the Kansami Tens is very absorbent and it freaking takes forever to dry. So there's that. Um. Skylar said, I believe Charisma and Gal Gadot. I also believe others. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, I, there, there were a few that, but this is the thing. When a lot of people say the same thing about one person, I'm, I'm going to go, okay, now there, there may be something there. When it's one or two people and no one else is saying they saw it, then I have questions. But when the, as many that came out against Joss Whedon, it's like, whoa, that's a little, now we're getting fishy. Um, that's definitely... And like Charisma's story, I don't know if you've read it, like it doesn't seem super outlandish. Like it seems believable. To, like it, it didn't, some of the stories that people come up with, I'm like, really? Because that sounds a little weird. But that the, hers seemed very like, they just seemed likely. So I don't know. But again, you know, innocent until proven guilty. We look at what happened to, um, what was it? Um, what's his name? Why did my brain shut down? Um, Edward Sc Scissorhands. Um, Everyone's yelling at me right now, I bet, the name that I cannot think of right now. But he was accused, and it turned out the girlfriend was more the more abusive one. They were, I, I, I suspect they were both just toxic, and it wasn't a healthy relation all the way around. But she was 
at least as bad as him, if not worse. So at least from the, the recordings and you're like, everyone initially jumped to, oh my gosh, he was abusing her and he was this and that. And it's like, she sounds like she was just as bad as he was. Like they do not sound like that was a healthy relationship. So I'm not usually going to jump instantly to the first thing someone says, but also, I don't know. I just kind of got the feeling with Joss Whedon, like, yeah, so that, that sounds like what I would, like, I'm not surprised. Um... Sarah said, sometimes I enjoy making non-archival drawings when I'm frustrated. Works out great because I don't care if it comes out like crap. That is a good point. I actually save, I have a few non-light pass colors of different things that I save for that reason where I'm like just sketchy. I don't care because I don't care, you know. Uh, Angel said, anyway, to, um, anyway, do YouTube invite you to events and stuff once you're verified or they could care? They don't care. I am a nobody. I don't get views. So I think views matter more than the subscribers. My videos don't get that many views, so some of them do, but I'm not a big person at any, like, it would not be worth my time to even go to the, like, I could go to those events on my own. That is, I used to get invited just because I was with Collective Digital Studios. I would get the invite through them, and it's like, I'm not going, first off, by the time I started YouTube, I wasn't even in LA anymore, so it wouldn't even be convenient. So I was like, yeah, no, that is... Um, but I am a nobody in the YouTube sphere of things, like, I really... I don't, I just don't get the views that the bigger people get. Um, let's see. I like that, Joseph. Don't be afraid to paint crap. Crap is fertilizer for better things. Well said. Um, how do you make colored pencil look like paint? I do it on paper, it just looks see-through. More layers, lots and lots and lots of light layers. Don't push super hard because then you can't get many layers, but the paper will make a difference and then lots of layers. Sarah said, I used to think I would sell celebrity portraits because I thought it would be easier than selling pictures of unknown people. I didn't understand copyright. Yeah, that's pretty, that is pretty common. Johnny Depp, yes. Yeah, I knew you guys were all going to yell at me, but I like all the names. I just couldn't think of it. My brain doesn't know. I need brain therapy. See, I don't need speech therapy. I need brain therapy. Angel said, ironic, Amber Heard is an ambassador for victims of abuse. And that right there is what happens when you automatically believe somebody's claims. She's a manipulative liar. She's an actress. She's good at lying. That's her job. She's, and you listen to those videos or the recordings and you're like, holy crap. Now I've lived in abusive situations and I'm telling you right now that woman is abusive. That is not the, the, the fake, the, the, the behavior she does is how you trick everyone else into thinking the other person is the abusive one. When you are, I, realistically, chances are they were both in the negative, but everyone jumping to thinking that he, she was completely innocent and poor, uh, you know, poor Amber Heard. And it's like, this woman is a manipulative, like she is a piece of crap human. She is somebody I would not want to be anywhere near because these, like we're talking sociopath level of insanity, like listening to this woman. And, um, so yeah, I, that th she's an example of why, you know, you had everyone doing the whole, always believe a woman who makes a claim like that. I've known too many who lied, like personally, firsthand. I have known too many women who lied and ruined men's lives who were nowhere near them, didn't never touch them. But because that man wasn't giving her the attention she wanted, he wouldn't go out with her. There were some, like, there are some big addictive ladies out there that are just insane. And ruined one guy, he was going to school to be a school teacher and she made claims against him and he was kicked out of school. And because he now had this on his record, never touched again, did not, we know, knew this girl and we knew she was lying. She knew she was lying. Didn't matter, ruined his life. And it's like, so just because of that, what I've seen, I don't jump to the conclusion. And it really makes me mad because these women who make these false claims are hurting actual victims. There are real victims out there who should be believed and should be trusted. But we have so many people lying and everyone now jumps to a, a suit. Like, yes, I want the facts in a situation, not just to assume what somebody told me I needed to believe. Like, give me some, let's, because the fact, when the facts come out in a lot of these situations, it's like, well, who looks dumb now for believing the initial lie? Anyway, sorry. Rant. Um, let's see. <laughs> but she's not going to be an actress, to be honest. <laughs> Monica said, Moss is like, oh, yay. And she, she feels good and wants this bird. I thank you for all the tips. Uh, the fire is starting to look better. Awesome. That is good news. Yay. Cake involved for everyone. Um, Angel said, the judge didn't care. It's the, the pretty privilege. 
L'Oreal is still endorsing her. That's what's crazy to me. Like, it doesn't make sense how these companies decide this person did something that we've decided is horrible. This person did the equivalent, but we're okay with that. Like, it's very, it's very frustrating. Um, and we don't, we've gotten to a society where we believe based on Twitter popular opinion and not on facts. We jump to conclusions without, without looking into things. And I've been guilty before too, where I believed something and it only happens so many times before you're like, okay, I don't believe anyone anymore. I'm going to wait for the facts to come out and then we'll see what happens then. But yeah, it, it's, it's a bit frustrating. Anyway, Amanda said, hello, just found your channel. Love your work. Very beautiful. I work with colored pencils as well, but not professional by any means, but working on it. Thank you for all the tips and tricks. Oh, yay. Thank you. And welcome to me ranting about things that have nothing to do with colored pencils. So maybe this isn't our first best meeting of me showing you how to art. I apologize. We chat and talk about everything in these. Um, let's see. Angel said, love you for stepping on your facts so box. I <laughs> love you so much for that. Um, I just don't like to see anyone's life ruined because somebody else lied. And we, ha we kind of are in this place where everyone assumes that women don't lie about things. I've seen it. I've seen them lie about these things and ruin. So I don't want to see anyone's life ruined. I want everyone treated fairly and honest and like stop trying to ruin people's lives because you didn't get your way. And that's what I saw happen with some of these women where it was, uh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating to see somebody that is permanently damaged because of somebody's manipulations and lies. Um, yeah, Angel said her case was overlooked because she's beautiful. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I don't know the details, but honestly would not surprise me. And then Fine Art said, do you know if it's possible to do portraits of a deceased famous people where the photographer is also deceased? I'm thinking of Lucille Ball or John Wayne. No, because the family owns the rights to Like Lucille Ball's family is crazy protective of that. So you have, like there, it's after, I forget what the copyright laws are exactly, but there, there are certain laws where like after a certain amount of time from the death, it would open up. But if the family owns the right, like there, there's some weirdness that it gets complicated, but no. Yeah, guilty until proven innocent on social media. Yep, that is so true. But no, um, Lucille Ball is not in the public domain. Um, definitely not. Their family is very protective, or unless it changed in the, like the recent couple of years. I don't know, like date. You have to look up the dates, but no. Um, you've got a long time before that would happen. Let's get a little bit of kaput mortem in here with these. Um, pencil. Now, the reason that I'm going with the polychromos for these little details is that they're little details and these sharpen to a finer point than any of my other pencils. So they're perfect for this. For the initial layering, I could have used any of my pencils. Then I was just choosing based on what color I wanted more than, than like, I need this brand for that. Sarah said, I saw a video of models discussing how they were abused by photographers. One recounted how she told her agency about how a photographer molested her and they just said, yeah, he's known to do that to girls. See, and that's what bugs me because you have those two that I'm sure happens. Like I have no doubt it happened. That was a known thing I'm, uh, in California. If you've been in California very long and you've known people who are actors or actresses, we know this is a part of the industry. It is a dirty industry. And it's funny because the same industry is the one who jumps on their soapboxes telling everyone else how they need to live their lives and how they act like they're these bastions of morality in all things and that they care about other people. These are some of, if you have met many people in Hollywood, you are talking about some of the worst of humanity. They are horrible humans, the things they do to each other, how they treat people, drugs, they're all in most, most I knew of were heavily into drugs. And yet they run around telling everyone else they act like, you know, it's all fake. They're actors. They know how they lie for a living. That is what they do. They're good at it. They're very convincing. And so it's, it's really annoying though, because you have the people who lie when you have cases like this, that are true, people write it off and ignore it. And it is very common in the industry, very, very common. But the problem is we're going after people who didn't do it. And then ignoring the cases where it did happen. And that's where it's just frustrating. I, I just want, I want truth. I don't like liars. I want things to be truthful. And I don't, the people doing and saying something like, like there is a special place in hell for a woman who lies about that because you are, you are hurting the women who are actual victims because now people aren't going to believe the actual victims because you got found out as a liar. Sorry, again. Um... Angel said, want, might want to buy those L'Oreal products. They might protect her for a future endeavor. I mean, I'm, I'm not a L'Oreal fan anyway. Uh, did I go to art college? This is just a hobby. Or is this just a hobby? I'm not sure why those are the only two options. I did not go to college, but I am a professional artist. Like college is not the end all of you're an artist. Actually, most artists that I know who went to college work at Macy's. So no, you don't need to go to college to be an artist. I did not go to college. I taught myself and I am a professional artist. This is my job. It is a good job.
I like it. I am a fan. But I know we teach kids now that you have to go to college for everything. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. Uh, well, depends on what you want to do. You want to be a doctor? Go to college. You want to be a lawyer? Be a go to college. You want to be an artist? Learn to paint. Not necessarily the same things. I mean, it depends on what your goals are. I'm not saying college is always bad. I'm just saying it's not the end all of what you can do for your, your career, depending on what you want to do. Hi, Lynn. Um, let's see. Angel said, I would like to paint and design your soapbox. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Victoria said, hi, Lisa, so happy I got to join today. Love your videos. Thank you. We're almost done. Well, okay, this guy's, this guy's getting into a good place to be about done for the day, but he'll need, still need some touch-ups once we get his, his buddy over here. So see how I'm just overlapping some of these edges? And Alia said, college is very overrated. I work in IT and some of the best ones are self-taught. There you go. Uh, Amanda said, that's how, how I work. No need to apologize. I plan on sticking around. Great channel. Oh, thank you. Sue said, thank you for sharing so much knowledge. I've learned so much from you in the last few years. Oh, I got goosebumps. Thank you, guys. Uh, Gypsy Heart said, I wish celebrities would put the focus back on entertaining and stay out of uh, politics. Oh, right there with you. And I don't care if I agree with your politics or not. I'm not going to a celebrity to get my information on political information. I like That is not where I'm doing my research. I can decide without somebody else telling, and again, I don't care which side they're on. I am not talking about like that, but why would I trust somebody who lies for a living being the person to be the moral? And again, maybe part of it is because I've been around enough of them growing up in Southern California. I've been around, these are not good people. The ones I was, they were not, and I'm not talking, I know I mentioned Jessica Alba earlier. I have no idea who she is in as an adult. I knew her at 12. She was one of the few friends of my sisters I really liked at that time. Although, total side story, another one of my sister's friends from when we were even younger, Shalini, she just moved into my area. She's a McKinney. I can't wait to hang out with her because I've not seen her since we were kids and she's amazing. Her and her sister, well, um, Danusha's not out here, but yeah, Shalini just moved out here with her family and I'm so excited. Um, let's see. George, I love your artwork on your website. Thank you. I read that wrong at first. I love your work. I thought it said, I love your art. Like I'm adding punctuation that wasn't there. Work on your website. <laughs> like I needed, I because my, my brain, I'm automatically feeling guilty because I do need to work on my website. So I misread that as, as I love your art. No, go work on your website. It's not what you said. That's how I read it. Okay, funny. Um, let's see. Erica said, I'm a computer science engineer. I have an MBA and recently gave myself a chance to explore drawing. I'm obsessed. That is awesome. Heads, I want to draw like you when I grow up, along with my two boys and loving hubby. Yay! Angel said, they sing John Lennon songs to us like it would solve the pandemic. Out of touch. Oh my gosh, that is the most cringe video. I know which one you're talking about. That was so cringe. I mean, I get that they mean well, but that's kind of the thing with rich people or celebrities, no matter who they are and no matter how much I may like them. They don't live like the rest of us do. They don't get what it's like to grow. Like I grew up poor. Uh, they don't get what that's like. Stop scratching. Stop scratching. Wait, wait, sweet boy, stop. You're gonna hurt your face. He has allergies, so I have to stop him because he'll over scratch and sometimes hurt his face. But anyway, um, no, it's kind of funny with some of the celebrities. And like I said, some I think that a lot of them mean well, but they don't get it. Like they don't live in our world. They're not. They think they want to think they're the same as us. They want to connect with us. It's like, you are not the same as us, sweetie. You don't panic every time tax season comes around going, oh, how much am I going to, oh, did I save enough? You don't have to worry about what's on sale in order to be able to buy it. You don't have to worry about the fact that your clothes have holes in them, but you can't afford to get new ones or that you out, like in my case as a kid, you outgrow your shoes, you need new shoes, but you can't, you know, your parents can't afford it. Like you, they didn't Now Some of them grew up like that, but I mean, at this point, so many of them are just so out of touch and don't know what a lot of us have, have lived through. And it's kind of funny to watch them try to pretend like if, if the script isn't written for them, they don't know how, what to say. And then they just like, Oh, stop talking. Please stop talking. Um, let's see. Skylar said, how do you deal with pain in your arms from drawing too much? I really don't have an issue with it, but I, I work, I can adjust my easel so that I'm at a comfortable level. So that's not too big of a problem. Now I will, I do have arthritis. I have ankylosing spondylitis. So I have an arthritis that started when I was in my late teens and my, this wrist has always been the worst. And so that can be a problem if I've worked in pencils for too long and I'm having a flare up. Um, that is, and in that case I switch over, like I'll finish whatever color piece, pencil piece I'm working on and I'll work in acrylics for a while until my arthritis calms down. 
So that's for me, but it's gonna depend on what's causing your arm pain. For me, I don't really have an issue with it, but also I'm resting my hand. You can see it, it's like here. I rested on my paper. Well, it's not my paper, it's actually the drawing board underneath. And it's at an even, like it's a comfortable level for my arm and I'll adjust that easel as I need to, to get it into a comfortable position. So that is for what works for me. Now here, this guy, this is almost more like drawing fine fur than feathers. Get it out of your head that this is feathers. They are feathers. Don't look at them as feathers. It won't come out right. It's more fine, fine fur. And these little details are what really, I know we've got to wrap this up for today, but these little details really are what make, oh wait, that's actually down here. Um, what make everything start coming together. So the, it's normal for the piece to look kind of terrible at first, but you just keep layering until it starts looking good. As long as you haven't pushed too hard too early on, you should be able to continue layering. But even here where I want like really white highlights, we'll do that next week with the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture that I can just lay on top of that. And I do want to brighten a few things up, so I'm going to grab my Derwent Drawing Chinese White. This will also soften things up. Uh, let's see. David said, I thought your videos were accelerated, but you actually speak at an impressive speed. Thanks for your videos. I trained my color pencil skills um, as well as my English. I am French. Nice. I'm always impressed with everyone who can speak more than one language. I can't even do English right. Like I stumble over those half the time too. Before anyone says, when I talk slower, it's actually worse. Um, let's see. Sarah said, two videos I recommend to anyone who thinks college is absolutely necessary are 10 reasons. I think college is overrated by real men's style and why university is number one regret of most people's lifetime. But too, you know, and I think too, college is going to depend on where you're at financially. I don't think that college is like a bad, I'm not, I don't want to make it sound like it's the worst experience and it's the waste. It depends on what you're going for. And were you able to financially afford it? For me, I would have had to go into severe debt to, and this is the problem with, with art and college. I would have had to go into so much debt. I wouldn't have bought this house. I went, what, 43, four, almost 44? There is, and I just bought my first house. I never, I wouldn't be here if I had that college debt on top. I would still be working on the college debt if I had gone to college. But my art wouldn't necessarily have been any better. It might have, it might not have. It depends on who the teachers were. So, and what I, I learned myself from it. So it's like, you have to think, we don't think of the payout. We just think go to college and then we'll pay back the debt. Is the thing you're going for college going to pay back that debt? Now, if my parents were wealthy and they could afford the college, I probably would have wanted to go for the experience. I'm not saying it's a bad. I'm not saying that you're not going to get good experiences from college. I'm saying it's, in my case, financially, it wouldn't have made sense. It wasn't going to make me more than what I make now, only I would have been in debt from that, and then I wouldn't have been able to buy a house. I would have been struggling more financially had I had some letters in front of or behind me. Where do those letters go before or in front of your name? I don't know. But it's because I didn't go to college. See, this is what happens when you don't go to college. You don't know where the letters go. But it's not, it's not, um, you, you, I don't know. You have to think about that. Like with being a doctor, you're going to make enough to pay back your, your loans if you, you budget. And you, it'll be rough, but you're going to do that. An artist is going to have a much harder time. And that's why most of the artists I knew who personally who went to college are working at Macy's because they needed to pay back their student loans. They're not even doing art. So it depends, you know, on what the situation is. I'm not going to say it's the wrong thing for everybody. It would have certainly been the wrong thing for me. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of like Joseph, and the does seem about right for what the attitude is of a lot of these people are. If you're having trouble starting a business, just ask Daddy for a million dollars. Yep. Um, some of us have to start from the bottom. Uh, but the, then the thing is that we, I don't know, we learn more. We learn, you learn a lot if you work your way up. Um, let's see. Angel said, all these telethons, they wanted us to donate $20. No, we are the ones who need the donation, right? Um, I went. So, and maybe because to be fair, I was buying, I forget what I bought. There was something I could only get at Whole Foods. And this is back when Whole Foods before Amazon owned them. So they were more expensive. So I guess they assume if you're shopping there, you're rich. And I forget there was some product because of being celiac disease. There are like, it was limited on at the time trying to find gluten-free things was a challenge. So I'd gone to Whole Foods to get some of the gluten-free products I needed. So I'm in there and the woman rang, who rang me up. I totally pulled a, can I speak to your manager? Actually, I wrote a letter and they never responded. 
she rings me up and she's trying to sell me on i need you to do you can you donate this money for such and such and i was like i, I need the all the donation money or something i don't remember what i made i was trying to joke because i'm always joking i'm just a massive smart ass so i i said something about like the the donations like i needed the donations for my own funding for my own business or i don't remember what it was um the some comment Oh, this woman, it pissed her off so bad. She started slamming my groceries in whatever I had bought. She started slamming it in the bag. And it was like, it was an instant switch off on her. This woman was insane. Obviously, she was not super stable. That that made her mad that I made a joke. And it's like, I don't know if she just assumes because I was shopping at Whole Foods. She, it's like, you don't know my story. You don't know that I'm actually struggling and I just needed a few gluten-free items I couldn't find anywhere else. But you're making a comment like this woman was angry. I did write to Whole Foods at the time like, hey, this is what one of your employees just know this is how they're treating their customers if they don't want to donate. And they never responded, which is weird because usually companies, if you were to contact corporate, they would be like, oh, we're sorry. We'll, you know, talk to them and let them know not to treat their customers like crap. But I never did hear back from that was a very odd one to not hear back from. This woman was like, oh, she was, well, she, she, she won very stable. Um, let's see. Victoria said, working on drawing a parrot right now. I've been watching your video since I was 11, 15 now. Learned so much from you. Thanks. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Where are you, Straw? Uh, Sneak said, I know the time is short, but it seems you're having trouble stopping. I know I am because I'm like, it's just getting to that stage where he's starting to look good. And I want him to like, so I'm going to work a few more minutes. Um, just a few. Angel said, shoot me into the ether, Lisa. I hate living here on Earth. Um, I can only choose one medium to work with, with. What would it be? I would never want to have to choose, but it would definitely be if I did, like, going off on a desert island, you only get one medium forever. I don't know why that would be a thing, but we're going to pretend it is. Um, it would be acrylics just because I feel like acrylics, there's nothing I can't do with them. They're a very versatile medium and you know, acrylics, I count my airbrush as a, a tool of acrylics, but I really, really, I mean, they're maybe because that was my primary medium. So I'm going to be partial to that anyway, but yeah, I would say probably acrylics. It'd be hard though. I wouldn't want to ju choose just one medium. I would definitely get very bored. I like, I, I enjoy switching it up. Like I'm actually looking forward to, I think maybe the next um, project will be um, colored pencil over watercolor. So we'll do a mixed media. I'm thinking, we'll see. It depends on what, what project I come up with. It'd be kind of the same thing, the collage, the super, the surreal look, but I don't know what, if you've got ideas, well, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll probably just take a few different things and combine them into some random thing. So I think this guy has a seed. It looks like an empty seed hole stuck on the side of his beak. It's the same color as his beak, but having birds, I know what that looks, that's what that looks like to me. If you've got this reference photo, so we're going to leave that out. Um, Linda said, you're such an inspiration. You have made learning to draw and paint such a pleasure. Oh, taking a painting during my retirement has opened up a whole new world for me. Thanks. That is awesome. Yay. That's so cool. My great uncle went to art school, but, but it was the rancher he worked for that paid for. Oh, wow. That's cool. See, I, and that would be a situation like if I was given that kind of an opportunity, I probably would have done it, but it wasn't. And I've told this story before. It was kind of crazy. This, I watched a thing. You could probably find the video on YouTube and it was set up in a way that you were supposed to think it was so horrible and these poor people with their student loan debt. But the thing that annoyed me was they chose to take out debt for a profession that would never, ever be able to pay that debt back. That's a problem. And honestly, I blame the colleges for this. I blame the people giving out loans to people who have no way to pay them back. And now that person is stuck in this endless cycle of trying to pay back a loan, but not living the life that they could have otherwise been living. So one of the story here was this girl, she came, I forget where she, which country she came from, but she worked her butt off. She went to college and she already knew how to sew. This was the crazy thing. She made these leather bags. She already knew how to sew. She's already doing a good job. Goes to school, graduates, comes out with like $120,000 debt. Something, I forget what the actual number was. So, you know, I guarantee I'm giving you the wrong numbers, but something like that, some crazy amount comes out with this debt, but she couldn't get a loan to get her business started because she had such a huge college debt. So she couldn't get the materials needed 
for the business that if she would have just worked a normal job, she already knew how to sew, worked a normal job, built up a name for herself because she had people who wanted to buy the purses, these places like, um, like little specialty shops liked her stuff. She could have done more if she didn't go to college, the college, the, the college debt, I should say, college is too expensive. College did not, you used to be able to work yourself through college without debt. You just worked your part-time job, went to school. You couldn't do that. You can't do that anymore. The, our system is insane the way we've got this set up and giving out loans to people who have no hope of paying them back. That's insane. We are setting them up for a lifetime of struggling because they owe this student. I know like most of the people I know actually have these crazy student loan debts and that's not right. You should be able to work your way through. I have a friend who went, the college she went to did not allow you to have a job while you were taking certain classes, I, she's a school teacher now, but you weren't allowed to work while taking those courses. Like she couldn't work as a, I think she worked at restaurants at the time. Couldn't have a job while taking their, why? Oh, right. We don't want you ahead. Fine. I mean, it just does not make that we are setting up people to struggle in a way that we like it. It, it just, whoever's coming up with these ideas is just, I almost want to say evil because they're setting people up for failure. And it's like, you can't be, these colleges can't be stupid enough to real, not realize what they're doing to these people, giving loans out. Or I don't know who's, a, let's be realistic, I don't know who's giving out the loans, but whoever's giving out these loans and set in the, the colleges should be like, I would think that they should counsel the people, the students going, hey, um, this thing that you want to go, you know, you want to learn underwater basket weaving. You're not going to make any money off that, but you're still going to owe the money for the classes you took. So that's kind of a, you know, it's a concern. It, it makes me mad that we're setting people up for that, that chat, that like hardship. Um, let's see. Anyway, any chickity or Nikki chickity said, I messaged you on Patreon because of an issue with the postcard. I'm not sure if I got the message. I have to go through and look. I have not had time. I'm going to go in on stop. I have, but. If the message, because I'm going to assume this was what it was, I have not sent out postcards. I've got the August postcards. They're, oh, wait, no, they're in there now. I moved them when I cleaned the studio. I just moved them to another room. But they're almost done. Those are August and September are going out. And then I've got to do October, November will be next. That should have gone out in December, January. But anyway, I'm always, I'm always behind on those. So if that is all, if it's that you haven't gotten postcards since, since your August card, or you haven't gotten the August, it's me. I'm late. Stupidly late. I'm working on it. I'm just, I'm having a hard time to, I work every day. So it's not something like, oh, I'll just take this time that I would normally be working. Like it's, if I get a, an hour to work in the yard or an hour, like it is rare. And I've been, I've been doing more videos and that is making it, it's not a good excuse. I'm just telling you why I'm, it's not straight lazy, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm still a failing. I still need to do it, but yeah. Um, let's see. Lynette said, I have enjoyed this afternoon with the chat to listen to. I've been trying to pull all my, put all my pastels together, organizing from light to dark. Oh my, it takes so long. I just organized the studio. I know what you mean. Um, Joseph said, I can't remember which one, but that was an actual politician to somebody asking about a small business creation. LOL, what? Are you, he's, a politician said that? Oh my God. Really? Wow. Um... See, this is why I don't talk politics. They all, I don't care which side of the board you're on. I hate politicians. They're all dirty. They're all just money hungry. I don't understand why we have lobbyists. I think lobbyists are dirty. I think the fact that the amount of money involved in politics is dirty. I hate it all. I want less government in my life and I hate them all. Anyway, um, let's see. And that is why I can't talk about it. Um, because I will, no matter what, I think politics should be kept out of the stuff, but it's like, no matter what, because you have people who are like, no, but I love this politician. They're all dirty. I hate them all. So no matter what, I piss people off. Uh, thanks, Shelly. I don't know. She says on my TV, it looks 3D. Yay. Good. Uh, Erica said, hate to go and need to, uh, have to feed a family, but had a great time. Thanks and bless you. Thanks for joining. Um, Angel said, need a vacation, but uh, can't, so vacation and dreams. Uh, do I listen to music? Can't draw without it. Sometimes I'll listen to music. Usually I'll listen to an audiobook. I need to start a new audiobook though. I just finished the one I was, I, ooh, that looks good there. See, look at, this is the, this is what, Scarlet? No, Crimson, Azul, I can't say it. Um, look how good that looks up against the yellow between the yellow and the green. It makes sense because complementary to green, so those colors look good together, and then it just works well for that shadowed area. Is that on my reference photo? No, but it looks so good. 
Okay, I need to just stop. We'll have to finish the little details on him next week. And then the thing is too though, when we work on this bird, that will make me pull some of the colors here. I'll balance them together, but he's at a good place to stop. I'm, I'm not unhappy with this. We are already at 317. I need to go take a nap because I have to get up and work on my surreal job. That should be for you guys. Hopefully if everything goes well, I'll have him finished for you on Patreon coming up on Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, I guess, depending on what time you're watching. But yeah, um, let's see. Um, scrolling. Yeah, student loan equals legal slavery. I'm kind of, I kind of agree with you on that. Um, Shirtney said, so true. So many people go to school thinking it will be better off in the long run and don't realize how much it actually costs. Yeah, like why are, why are they not sitting down and going, okay, this is what you're going to pay to finish that degree. This is what you're going to pay. And how many people I know that go in and keep changing their majors? Why are you going to school and paying off? Now, I can understand going in and getting, like, go to a junior college or go to something like that to get your basic stuff out of the way, your English, your math, whatever basic stuff you need. Why are we, these people that keep going in and they're not sure what they want to do with their life and they keep changing their majors? You're going into debt for all of that. And you, I get it. You don't have to start paying it back because you just change your major and you're going to stay in school longer. But that debt just keeps racking up. And why are we not teaching that? Why don't we teach economics in school? Why don't we teach the basics of basics in making good decisions when it comes to financial things like this? Instead, we just keep racking up that debt, racking up that debt. I mean, it's we do the same thing with credit cards. And so why I'm so against, like, when people are like, well, I can't afford this. Don't charge it. Save up for it. If, if I can't buy it right now, I am not going to get it. The only, I mean, my house and the car, that is it, which is our big ones, but at least they hold value. You can trade, you know, sell them if needed or whatever. But don't, like, oh, why are we not teaching? We need to be teaching people. And I get it. We can go into the whole whatever. But it's not good. Um, let's see. Yeah, well, wow. Shartney said it's so expensive. I'm only on my bachelor degree and already 50,000 in loans. Hopefully you didn't do what some of my friends did and change your major eight times and owe on that too, which is never going to pay them back because they changed the major. So they just owe for nothing. Um, so frustrating to see this happen. And it's frustrating with the friends too. It's like, wait, how do you not know that's a bad idea? Like, why did you start school before you knew what you wanted to do? Oh, right, because your parents and because the school districts themselves encourage you, oh no, straight out of high school, you need to go to college. Why? You don't know what you want to do yet. Why would you do that? Um, sorry, I have an attitude. Uh, just print money if that's the case. Yeah, Angel, isn't that what we're doing now? Um, do I watch anime? I haven't in a long time. I really liked, um, Full Metal Alchemist. Really liked that. That's anime, right? I like that one. What other ones have I watched? I've watched a few. Evangelion, was that one? I think I like that. What's the one where the character's name was, um, I haven't watched it in so long because I don't really have time to watch stuff anymore. Um, um, Riel, that one was really, and I can't think of the name of that was really cool. Um, yeah, I've, I've watched a few. Are postcards necessary? Can you let them go? Full length tutorials should be enough. Just saying. Well, that's what the $4 a month already gets. So the postcards are the main thing that the $9 a month get. So, and I've, I've considered it, but people like it. And I, if, if I kept up with it and I did it on a schedule and that's what I have to do, I have to get myself on a schedule with it. If I did that, I wouldn't be behind like this. It's just getting on a schedule. So I am working on my schedule. I've already gotten two of my major goals. We're having my normal Tuesday and, and Thursday videos go every single week, no matter what. So now that needs to be in the, I've got to rework this. Um, thanks sneaks. So you're a little burning. It's gorgeous. I'm waiting for him to fly out. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, Nick says a politician's first lie is when they say they want to serve the public. Every single one of them. Not a fan. Uh, do, how do I like the whole buying pencils? I don't have them yet. I can't bring myself to buy them because they are so disgustingly overpriced. There is no pencil that is worth what they're charging for that set. So I'm sorry. There's just not. You're not. I don't. I know people have used them and they're no better than polychromos or the other pencils I like. So what? I can't bring myself to spend that. So I'm waiting to see if either Dick Book has a big sale or when maybe other companies start using it. Right now they kind of have a monopoly on that. So they have their prices set at whatever they have their prices set. You can use coupons on, but Billick hasn't had one. You guys get a Blick coupon and you want to give that to me more than 10%. I think all I found is 10%. Um, let me know and I'll order them, but I just can't bring myself to do it right now. I can't like, I don't want to give them what they're asking because I'm then telling them that that is a suitable price. Like people are willing to pay it and people are willing to pay it. I just don't want to be one of them, but I also need to do a review because that's my job. So I'm kind of torn on that of my principles of you're overcharging for this. And I don't blame Blick for that. I blame Holbein. You're that, no, that is stupid. That cost is, I feel like it's a bit um, so yeah, no, I, I haven't used them yet. 
Um, let's see. The problem actually is that tuition has been allowed to rise 400% in 40 years. Debt is, uh, amount debt is unaffordable for anyone, no matter what they go for. I know. And that's ridiculous that it shouldn't, this is, you know, when it started, when we started doing the loans the way we do, when we started the student loan system the way it is, they were like, oh, they're going to get a loan for it so they can go no matter what we charge. And the college are sort of like, well, in that case, let me go ahead and... It's frustrating. It's very dirty. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling and then we'll wrap this up. Joseph said, my grandma got a four-year degree on a summer job. My mother got hers with a part-time job. I've been paying off my two-year degree for 15 years. Yep. You are exactly what I'm talking. You, yep. It's insane. And I'm not one, I'm not saying college should be free. I'm saying it should be reasonable. You should be able to afford to go without having to go into debt. Like these people, that one girl with the purse, she could have bought a house. She could have bought, like, it's insane that she has this debt for something that she's now working. I think she was working as a waitress or something. I don't remember. To pay off her debt. She does, cannot get the loan needed to get the business. It is insane what we set up. Uh, Tallulah said, so you probably won't remember a little that somebody asked a while back about you coming up with ideas for a surreal piece. You suggested to write down lots of subjects, little bits of, continued, where'd you go? Uh, and pick them out of a bag like a raffle. I just thought that might be a good idea for you to do in a live stream. Pick them out and come up with an idea and design. I think that is a good idea. That would be fun to like come up with a design and then be there in, like I could do it in the office. We can go and then find the reference photo we want to use, which is kind of what I do. I like this idea because I'll search for the, the reference photo. It's kind of, We've done something similar, but not where we were picking out random stuff like that. But I come onto like Pixabay, find our photo, bring it into Photoshop. We can go through the whole design process. That will make a very good, like, yes, we are going to do that. I love it. Uh, hi, Melissa. Shardy said, uh, no major change, environmental science, aquatic biologist. Uh, so good for you. You're smart. Uh, Casey Wood said, I never, I mean, smart, not, well, you're obviously smart because you have those, those are your degrees, but also for not changing your majors 800 times like my friends. Uh, let's see. Casey said, I never learned anything economical in high school. I wasn't even taught how to do taxes. Uh, we weren't taught how to do taxes, but we were taught basic economics in that, like one of the things my, my call or my high school, and again, this was back in 95. Um, so maybe they don't teach that anymore, but they, they actually sat us down and were like, it, I don't remember what class it was, but they went through and were like, okay, this is how much it costs to rent an apartment. This is how much a car payment would cost. This is how much food would cost at the bare minimum. You need to make this much an hour. And that is double what minimum wage is. So so you cannot live off minimum wage like you have to set your goals you know you've got to figure out something more don't think that you're going to work for mcdonald's and afford like it's you know basic stuff like that and i know that's going to make people mad but it was good information i needed to hear that i needed to know hey me working at this pizza place can't be my long-term goal i need to reach for something else um ended up working at an animal hospital and that, you know, that was a bigger thing. I worked as a receptionist, getting a job as a receptionist versus working at the pizza place. These were things I needed to know. I needed somebody to tell me these hard truths. We may not want to hear it. We may want to think that I should have been able, able to work in a pizza place forever. But that to me was my teenager job. This is what I did while I was in high school to make a little bit of extra money to help out with my parents because we needed the money there. You know, it wasn't, yeah, but we're not, I haven't heard of many people being taught that these days. Um, Shana said, here in England, we have a student uh, finance, so we don't have to deal with debt. Makes me sad that people have to deal with this in their lives, and it's hard enough. Cindy said, people are being told to get a degree when they should be told to find a career. My grandson decided not to go to college. Yeah, and there are trade schools that are perfectly, like, they are good. Uh, Sarah said, uh, loves this live stream. I'm always productive when listening to them. Oh, yay. That makes me happy. Cindy said, went to motorcycle. He went to motorcycle mechanic school. He was working within ten days of graduations. He left with a debt with of about four four thousand instead of one hundred and twenty thousand. That is awesome. Uh, Peggy said, I really get a chance to catch you live and always enjoy your recordings and watch them all. I enjoy listening to you on my art uh, as I work on my art. Thanks to all for all you do. Oh, that's awesome. Um, let's see, did the whole buy pencils blend? I don't freaking know because I'm, I'm refusing. I'm currently like taking a stand and refusing to pay what they are asking for them. It's my stand. Um, yeah, Claire Kreider said, I told my daughter not to go to college until she was sure. Go work a few jobs and find out what you actually like first. And see, that was a big thing for me. I went and worked at an animal hospital as a teenager. I wanted to be a veterinarian. 
Thank God I went and worked at an animal hospital to see what being a veterinarian actually included, and it was not what I thought it was. I, I don't know what I thought as a teenager being a veterinarian was going to be. It was just like, I like animals, so obviously that's what I want to do. No, no, that was not an environment that I enjoyed. That was not going to be a fit for me. So that, like, yes, if we if we were able to go and spend some time in the, the profession we thought we might like for a bit, volunteer, whatever we need to do, yes, that is what we should be doing. Um, Melissa said they didn't realize the professor's salary or raise the professor's salaries either. Okay, that's bull. They overbloated the administration and sports programs. That is insane. Um, way back when I went to college, it cost $65 per credit hour. Those were the days. Mira said short anime might be an option, like a total of 10 out to 20 episodes. Uh, Tallulah said, yay, I had a good idea. Looking forward to that. It'll be fun to see what random things you come up with and the way you put them together. Yes, that will be fun. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. We ran in the, over by a half an hour. I should, I should be napping. I should be getting sleep in before I get back to work tonight. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining. Make sure to check out Nick and Joseph's channels. They moderate and get rid of all the, the spammy stuff in the chat. Their links are in the video description. Um, Joseph's been live streaming on a regular basis and I missed his this week and I'm really sad. I need to go back and watch that. Um, Nick's done some really good colored pencil stuff. I don't think it's live stream lately. What's going on there, Nick? So check out their channels. Tell them thank you. Thank you guys for joining so much. And is that it? I will see you. I will have a video if all goes well. Um, I should have a video for you on Tuesday. And then I will see you on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Central Time for our next live stream. I don't know what we're working on this week. I don't know, maybe that would be a good time to come up with one of those fun designs we were talking about, huh? Anyway, thank you guys so much. And I will see you Wednesday. Bye.